You're live too, buddy. <laughs> Got you. All right, guys. Hey, welcome to this Thursday night's 100th edition of the live well here at Fish North Georgia. So glad that you could spend some time with us. If you're watching live, hey, it's going to be a great show. If you're watching at a later date, hey, we appreciate you too. Got two great guests in the house tonight. I'm really looking forward to picking their brains a little bit. To my left, I got Mr. Lipsticker Fish and Kevin Underwood, who uh, you can tell has been on the water. Right there is his lucky hat. I'm going to buy you a new hat when that wears out. Just let me know. Got some life left. Got some life left. So, yeah, so Kevin's in the house. And to my right, Mr. Rick Steckelberg. A lot of you guys know him from the baits. You also fished a little bit of the pro stuff yeah. back in the day a little bit. So, guys, listen, with your questions tonight, hey, bring them on. We're going to see what kind of information we can get out of these guys. So, And also, um, since this is our 100th episode of it officially being called The Live Well, we got some giveaways tonight. So throughout the night, we're going to have some questions. And, of course, we'll watch it. First one answers it. They're pretty cool stuff. So you will win some prizes. And, of course, we got our ops and question of the week about halfway through the show. So <clears throat> while we're at it, let's go ahead and let's talk our sponsors up a little bit. And we'll start with ops and floral carbon. Guys, again, these guys know about it. If you're in these highland reservoirs, these clear water lakes, especially if you're throwing spinning rods, a good fluorocarbon leader, you've got to have it. It's a must. And option to jump it into the market here. The products are going to be available in stores in April. Right now, you can order it on optionusa.com. Type in FNG, get 20% off. I'm telling you, I fished with it. I really like it. It's some good stuff. So go check out Option at their website. Next, now this is, you know, everybody knows about the forward facing sonar and all the drama that's going on. Nobody installs that stuff better than Trent Palmer and the guys at Sonar Pros. 770-530-4505 by appointment only. Now, listen, you watched what happened last week. Toledo Ben. I can't even pronounce his name. Who won that? And again, what, how do you pronounce that guy's name that won it? I can't. Anybody. Say, I can't say I it. How do you pronounce it? Uh, it's Japanese. Vegeta. For, Vegeta. Vegeta. Thanks, Harris. Well, you, know you know who put his sonars on? The guys at Sonar Pros right there. And the right great there. thing about that is, listen, he doesn't have to make a post every day about what boat he installed. You want to know what Trenton guys are doing? Watch on Saturday and Sundays. That's the guy you want putting in your stuff. So, yeah, check them guys out over at Sonar Pros. Tell them the guys at Fish North Georgia sent you. And, of course, now to my left right here, our next sponsor, Lipsticker Fishing, Kevin Underwood himself. Listen, you see it just about every day on the Fish North Georgia group page or on Lipsticker's page of the fish he's holding on. If you want to go figure out how to target these four, five, sometimes six-pound spots, this is the man you need to go with right there. Megalodons, that's what you call them, right? Megalodons. Megalodons. So if you want to get into that game, book a trip with Kevin. I'll tell you what, you will definitely, definitely love every second of it. I've been out in the water with him. Fantastic time. Tell me all the ways I can get in touch with you. Um, you can contact me on Facebook, Facebook Messenger. Um, you can call me, 678-459-8419, or you can send me an email at kevin at lipstickerfishing.com. A lot easier for you to say that than me. That's a lot to remember. Yeah. Guys, I'm telling you, worth every, every penny. Of course, right here you see in front of me our next sponsor, Evolve Rod Sleeves. Guys that have them know, listen, that's the best rod sleeve I've ever used in my life. They're made to float. They got the rod tip in it uh, right there at the end so, you know, your tip doesn't get broke. Guys, they got the little handle. We call it a lanyard, Kevin. We're starting that. In the, back you're in the back. It's the lanyard now. That's what I found. That's the right word for it. Lanyard. It's got a lanyard that hooks to your uh, reel so it doesn't fly off. And we all know, listen, you do not get hooks buried into this. So absolutely a must. Check the guys out over Evolve. Evolve USA, I think it is, dot com. Next, we got our guys over here, Festive Waters off Highway 369. If you're in the kayak or paddle sport game, go check out the guys, www.festivewaters.com. They can rig boats. They can set you up. I even believe they rent them. So <laughs> definitely go check them out if that's the game you're in. And then, of course, we've got Turner Tire right behind us. You can see the sign, 706-253-3339. Hey, family-owned business in Jasper, Georgia. You need a set of tires. Brock, he's an angler like us. Those guys will cheat you right. They're not a big chain. It's a family-oriented, family-run business. Those are the kind of people we need to support. So definitely, next time you need some tires, turn a tire right there. And, of course, my favorite. I love all my sponsors. But my favorite, Etowah Mead Beer and Wine in Dahlonega, Georgia. Tonight, I'm back to Granny's Apple Pie. And, again, it's one of our favorite flavors they got. The cool thing about mead is if you don't live near Dahlonega, can't go up there and see them, they can ship mead to you. But I'm telling you, it's a good atmosphere if you go up there. Check them out. It's just a little bit north of the Walmart up Highway 9 in Dahlonega. They do uh, trivia night on Thursdays, 
really cool atmosphere, especially in a college town. So an old fart like me, I enjoy it when I get up there. So, guys, we're right here in the comments. A lot of you guys are here. Uh, Miss Terry's here, of course, the best-looking one on there. And, um, yeah, a lot of guys out there. So hi, hi to everybody. So it's going to be a really great episode. We're going to talk about several different things. We're going to talk about baits. We're going to talk about the forward-facing sonar drama. We're going to talk about the tournament that's going to be held on Lake Lanier April 1st, but you can't have any of that stuff. Got some strong opinions here tonight. So guys in the comments, if you got those opinions, hey, let's talk about it tonight. So um, wherever we want to start, we can start. So Kevin, was you on the water today? Yeah, we was out there. I was out there with my brother. He came down from Nebraska to spend a little time with me. So we was out there hey, hanging out. How's the bite? It's pretty tough right now. Um, at least for us, it was uh, lake's been hammered, um, tournament after tournament, ABA, BFL, skater, skeeter, yeah, and then uh, we got another BFL coming up, so it's just gonna keep right on getting hammered. So. It is, but I think Lanier is one of those lakes that can handle it. Yeah, it's you know, fish are very transitional right now too, so that's kind of you know they're on a yo-yo about where they want to be. Absolutely. Right now, so my kind of show right here. Let's talk big baits, and of course, yeah. To my, to my right, we got the guy that does that. Interesting thing, though. I don't know how many of you know this, and this is something I found out today. You have six patents yes. in the uh, fishing bait world. Correct. What was the patent that we talked about the most, though, before, before that? You are you, you hold the patent to the what? Original fish head spin the or or underspin. The original fish head spin or underspin. This man owns the patent of it. Right. How does that patent process work? Uh, well, it, it's it's a long, drawn-out process is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, to be honest, it's really not worth the paper it's written on. Is it not? <laughs> it's really not. It really, I, well, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just a pat on the back to say that you've done something and you can say that you've solidified yourself in the world of designing something, having a pat. On the having a pat. Listen, hey, I think Other it's than a that, People look at it as, you know, it's not really... Well, it doesn't I, scare anybody anymore. Well, I want to know how you came up with that design. <laughs> it's kind of funny because uh, it's 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 kind of a long story because <clears throat> excuse me, um, I was actually making what was considered. Oh, slide that mic up. Oh, <clears throat> soft spoken. Hey, this listen. He is he is a podcast virgin. <laughs> We're taking care of that tonight. So. Uh, <clears throat> That's much no, better now. That is, up is that a good way to say it? Uh, I was making at one time uh, a very similar product like the Roadrunner, uh -huh. and um, they got a hold of it that I was making one, and they slapped my wrist. That's where I actually learned about patents, but they have actual trademark right. on their product, which means you cannot copy it no matter what you do to yeah. it and put it in the stores. Now, you can make it for yourself all you want to, but I was making them to, to put in the stores and this, that, and the other, and the guy's name... Um, he actually called me up and said, listen, he said, with your, with the way that you've designed this bait of ours, he said, you've done some different things to it. Why don't you just take that knowledge that you have and, you know, apply it to something else? He said, there's other people that use the same technology, but they've got a little bit of a different deal that we can't do nothing about. So why don't you do that? So that, that kind of sparked it all. Um, and I was out fishing. I was mad. I was, because I had just bought like, I don't know, four or 500 of these things. And I was like, man, I'm, I have to unload these things. Right. And I really couldn't because I was going to get sued if I did. So I went fishing. It was kind of odd that I was actually throwing a spinnerbait on a point. And all of a sudden, a shad just kind of fluttered up right next to the boat. And I looked at it. And I looked at my spinnerbait. And I looked at it again. And I thought, if I can get the balance right on this thing, yeah, I can make this work. And it doesn't look like a horse. It'll actually look like a fish, you know? So, um, 23 prototypes later fi figuring out how to get it to work how to get it everything to to do right because i wanted it to actually look like a shad yeah i wanted it to look like a keel of a boat and actually run like it it won't run like that but i've actually brought one of the first original ones that i actually made that i actually had when i had the swarming hornet lures company let's see this and uh <laughs> It just so happens I just bought those things. I uh, uh, got the lights real bright right there, so you can't see it, but you kind of can. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. Uh, but this was pre-patent, uh, before I even had the patent number and anything. But what I ended up having to do is it, it didn't really dawn on me that I had to wait above 
the heavy part of the weight yeah. to make it look like a keel. I had to put it upside down. When I first got the original, uh, the one that I wanted, it really looked kind of odd. And I was like, man, this ain't going to work. This is just weird looking. It really didn't look that good to me. But I only lived at that time. I was living in Gainesville, and I didn't live but about five minutes from Bayless Creek. And uh, throw it out there the first cast and caught by a two pound spot off that brush pile that's right beside the repo. Yeah. And uh, I was like, hmm, okay, maybe there's something to it. And it ran real straight coming through. And I was like, we've got this. Yeah. But that's not the whole process to the story. The one person that actually made this actually more famous than anybody is not living with thing, not living with us anymore. Right. Aaron Martin's had a lot to do with that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, let me, hey, first, first of all, Chris McClure, one more bad comment like that, I'm going to ban you. <laughs> Stevie Ray Vaughan is not greater than Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> we had that argument in the store. He's going to have to be uh, logging on under some alias name. He is. He is. I'm going to ban his ass. So, but now, okay, but you know, what, what's interesting to me is the underspin has become an entire market. Correct. And you basically started that entire market. I, I have been told that. I don't really, I mean, yes and no. Don't be humble. Well, it's because Blakemore came out with Roadrunner first, but they were considered what was considered at that particular part of chin spin. What chin everybody spin. was called as a chin spin. I got Instead you. of a complete underspin. Uh-huh. Brush pile by the reef pole. Got it. Thanks for the waypoint. <laughs> 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 See, listen, guys. It's, there you go. Listen, all... All the little juice is in the details right here. So if you pay attention to the details, you will get something. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, seriously, think about that. Probably more <clears throat> underspins are sold now. <laughs> like everybody and their mother has one. And right. some guys make some really good ones. Right. And some guys make some that doesn't matter how slow they fold, they roll. You know, there's some good ones out there. But just to sit back, I mean, do you ever just sit back and just go like, yeah. No, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would never do that. I would. <laughs> I would. No. I would. I, no, I, I can. I'm you're nice. That, you are nice. Do. No, but you got to be proud of it. You're well, at least proud, proud of, of it. it. I am proud yeah, of it. Yeah, I'm not mean like, you know, being like cocky. And cocky. No, but you got to be proud. Oh, I'm proud of it. So, and, he, and he's got some other baits here uh, we're going to go over. But I, I just, I had to ask uh, Kevin that because I, I knew, I thought you were the one that had invented it. I did. And uh, I just, listen, we got a celebrity right here. Whether well, you guys know I have other baits that. You uh, do. That didn't even, that that were way before their time. Yeah. I mean, me and Aaron were working on an actual drop shot rig way before the drop shot actually got famous out here. And people don't realize that during the swim bait craze and everything that's happened out here, it was happening in California way, way ahead of time. Seems Back like when, everything starts when out there. Jason Scott and Ken Huddleston, they were actually starting the first swim bait with Castaic swim baits. Yeah, and people don't really realize they 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 they, they link Ken Huddleston with the rubber swim bait that he's making now the trout, but he was actually with Jason Scott who made the first original Castaic trout, as well as I think his name is uh, 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 Jerry Ragged. Okay, and those were the ones that actually started that whole craze out there, and everybody out here was like, "Well, who's gonna what's gonna eat a nine inch bait?" Yeah, yeah. yeah now everybody's throwing now everybody's throwing it. Oh, it's crazy! Like that. And it's I tell you what, the, the price point on some of them things, man. Like, I'm not throwing. Yeah. <laughs> I, listen, because I mean, I first one hundred dollars swim bait I put on, I'll everybody can throw it in that line of pop, and I'll just watch that thing go on off in the hundred dollars swim bait. What are you talking I about? know. Well, listen, that's my budget. Oh, okay. like, I ain't got your money. <laughs> hey, I ain't got your money. Right there. Wait till that striper gets a hold of it, and runs you through the temple. I know. I know. It, seriously, like that's no, my no fear, more though. bait. <laughs> there you that, go. That, but that's my fear of throwing them big things, you know. And a lot of guys, and let's just be honest, there, there's a group of guys that will spend upwards of $1,000 on a bait, Jeremiah Giles. I think he's got every single one that's ever been made. <laughs> but He's on here somewhere. I'm sure if comments. not, he'll be in the comment section. He's in the long. comments. But seriously, for the average guy, you start getting above that $50 price point, and that, that's, I mean, that's high dollar for some of the baits, and like they're not going to throw those. And if they do, you got to be careful with it. I'd be afraid of that striper. Yep. You know, but I, I, you know, again, we're going to go over all his baits. Um, we got a lot to talk about. Yes, guys, I'm going to get to the forward face and sonar debate. <laughs> we're definitely going to get to that because it's, just, listen, you can't, you, if you go to the bathroom, I, I'm at the shop. If I go in the bathroom, by the time I get out of it, there's another post on the group page, somebody else fussing about it. So we're going to talk <laughs> about that. Um, we got, like I said, we got a bunch of giveaways tonight. So the first one that I'm going to do, the first one I'm going to do, this is these are some new arc baits. 
This is the CTA and the J110 SP jerk bait. Good looking baits, I'm telling you, and they're actually very affordable. So the first question of the night is going to be, what is the leading weight from the Elite Series today? First guy in the comments that puts out the leading weight, and you got to put it down correctly. Uh, correctly. So uh, JP Byrne outside, uh, hell, you get above 1295, and I'm at my breaking point. I got to tell you what. Let me ask you this because I put this, I put a short out. And, and just because uh, who got who got it first? Is Colton? Is that the right weight? Hang on, we're verifying. Verify the weights. Verify the weights. Yeah, it's up to you guys. So listen, hey, if it's wrong, it's on it's on Kevin and it's on. So is that the right one? Is that the right weight? That was the first one that popped up. But is that the right weight? Is it 39.1 or 01? Hell yeah, I know. I just want you guys to answer real quick. I pulled that out of my ass. Y'all see what I have to put up with back here? 39-1. <laughs> one, so 01. Oh, gosh, Kevin, make a call on that. Is 01 the same as 39-1? One? Is it 39-1 one ounce or is it 39 That's what I'm asking you. 39 and 1 ounce. So the going down, so that's not correct. Hunter Fishing. There you go. Hunter Fishing, 39-1. There you go. So, Hunter. Reach out to me on Facebook Messenger. Send me your address. I'll send you the baits right there. So congratulations. Throw these things and get back to me. Let me know how you how you feel about it. Um, did you see the weights today, though? Did, did you hear not. us talking about 39-1, five fish? I was making swim baits. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I had other stuff to do. But 39-1, and that can lead us into, into the forward facing a little bit. I, I really want to do the. I really want to get on these baits, but we'll, let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. So, Kevin is somebody that uses them. What's your opinion of guys that don't like it? This whole argument going on in the forward facing, and then we're going to talk about that tournament. But what you know, you use it. You showed me. Yes, um, I use forward facing sonar, and uh, I think it's good technology. It teaches um, – for what I do, I'm able to use that technology and really go out there and show people, hey, this is herring. This is what they look like. This is what they're doing. This is how they relate to our fish. This is how our fish feed on them. And, and really get to go over in detail and really show what's going on under the water. Um, so for me, um, in, in what I do, doing trips, I like having that technology. Yeah. Um, can I catch a fish without that technology? We've done it for years. Yeah. But it's a really good learning tool. And uh, I really think it has a lot of play in how fast people are learning. People are learning with that te technology. Um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like the, the little leapfrog game. You know, you you learn. And it kind of gets you further along in your your fishing wisdom or however you want to say it. Right. Your fishing knowledge grows a lot quicker with that technology. Um, yeah, I mean, does it, you know, does it suck for the guys that grew up that didn't have it and had to learn it? The old school the way. The old school way right. where it took years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it sucks. But, you know, I would definitely say, Hey, you know, um, I didn't grow up with it. Right. I didn't grow up using forward-facing sonar. You haven't had it that long. No, I really haven't had it that long. And I started uh, I started with Mega Live, and I, I'm not a fan of Mega Live. You're not Live. a fan of the Hummingbird, yep. No, sir. So, um, you know, I seen, you know, Garmin's technology, you know, when I would get on other people's boats, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get me a Garmin and put it on my boat. And, uh, you know, I've. I've enjoyed having it on there. People enjoy doing trips. People enjoy seeing, you know, what's going on. And they really like being able to see that and then have me kind of explain what's going on with, you know, the habitat and the fish and all. Yeah. Bait and everything. Yeah. And how they relate to each other. So, yeah. I, I, you um, know, I, I, like, I mean, I like that yeah. answer. So hopefully yeah. that's, you know. Yeah. What about you? I believe if you don't have it, you're getting beat by it. If you're tournament fishing, you pretty much got to have it, Yeah. if we're being honest. I, be I believe it brings back to that old scenario of what you used to look at, at, a, at when you'd be night fishing or even fishing in general. 
and you'd be going, I wonder how many fish are actually looking at this bait. Well, now you know. Now you know, yeah. And it makes people actually fish harder for those same fish, and either they bite or they don't bite. They, I think a lot of people get mixed up. The guys who were going out there doing the old school running 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 places, those are the people who are doing the forward-facing snapping, and they're kicking your butt. It's the same people that was going out there that was running 40, 50, 60 brush piles kicking your butt. It's the same people. It's just a different way to look at it. And I'm a firm believer that every, every, everything has its place and give it about three, four more years. Something else is going to take this place and there's going to be an uproar about it. It's just like Alabama rig was what? Yeah. Three years, five yeah. years ago. Right. Yeah. You know, it, well, let's ban it because you can catch a fish. But I, I know the reason behind with BASS, why they banned it, because so many people were actually catching the fish, but they were the, they were catching other fish, but they were getting mangled in the gills and killing fish and stuff like that with other hooks that were on them. Right. was their main reason. Yeah. It wasn't because you could catch so many fish because of it. That was their main reason. And that's when I was talking to uh, Ken Duke. He's one of the writers for BASS at that particular time. That was one of the reasons that they did that for. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> the, the, thing that, the thing that I've noticed with it, with forward facing sonar is it's just like politics in America today. You got your you got your far left guys that hate it or love it or hate it. Have you, yeah. and you got your far right guys that are the opposite. And neither one of them want to meet in the middle and just kind of discuss it. They just sit there and they bark at each other. And that's like kind of what I told you guys before. It's just like there's this group of guys like me in the middle that I we really don't care. Either way, if you got it, use it. If you don't got it, don't use it. Just whatever. So I don't um, care if it's they are not, but just yeah. level the playing field. Yeah. I mean, the only, yeah. The only people that I think it really is at a huge disadvantage to are co-anglers. Absolutely. That's a whole different topic. Yeah. The co-anglers and, and if the boater is going to be scoping and is not willing to work with the co-angler, then I feel bad for that co-angler. Yeah. But other than that, yeah. And, and it's really not that expensive. Not if you're putting, I mean, today's. if you're running a boat, and you're putting the gas and you're hauling it, it really isn't that expensive. No, not by today's standards. And right. Stuff. I mean, it's more money than I got, but you know what I'm saying. All right. So, so the people who are putting four and five transducers and units on it when they're getting 30, 35, and $40,000 worth of electronics on their boat, man, when's it going to stop? Man, yeah. Well, I think it stops when it says that yeah, eventually it's going to say that fish is two pounds. That fish is four pounds. <laughs> That's a six pounder right there. So you got that little thing right there and you're like, yeah, I don't want to mess with them. They'll be now, giving people ideas. That, huh? Don't that, be giving people ideas. You know what? They're they're probably research and development as we speak. Exactly. Like I mean, if you can if you can get one, or they can tell the species. Yeah. Now that then then you kind of push it a little bit, but I I really think it's much to do about nothing. Now in the elites, we saw what's his name? I can't pronounce his name, but the guy that won it last week Fajita. with all huh? Fajita. Fajita. <laughs> Faj Listen, I thought, Fajita. I thought he was Japanese. Yeah. Caillou Fajita, I think. Is it Fajita or Fajita? Fajita. I Fajita. Think. That sounds more Japanese than Fajita. Yes. Okay, because if a Japanese guy calls me, if a guy <laughs> calls up and says, hey, here. he goes, hey, you know, this is this is Fajita. No, nah, it ain't, dude. It's like the guy from the mortgage company calls up. He's got an Indian Indian accent. He goes, my name is Tom. <laughs> no, dude. Oh, your name is not Tom. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tom, buddy. <laughs> you ain't Tom. My name is Steve. Well, okay, so let, so let me ask you this question. If you were in charge of say bass and you had to be a rule you had to make a rule ban it keep it limit the amount of transducers what would you do transducers you would limit the amount of transducers yeah and what would your limit be one for the front one for the back and that's one it. for the front so you get two transducers on your boat and that's it that's it doesn't matter what you're running two transducers right. mm -hmm. okay that's fair what about you i would do the same thing one forward facing sonar transducer that's all you get right and then, of course, you know if you if you're a 360 guy, yeah. Um, would you would you qualify the 360 as forward facing sonar? Or would you qualify it as traditional? I would qualify it more as side imaging. Yes, uh, that's pretty much a, what it, it is. It is like a side imaging unit. It's yeah. not a. It is not a. It's kind of like your. You got to wait for it to come all the way around. Yeah, I mean, it's you can't just kind of stop it, can you? The, the right. transducer is spinning. Right. You can't stop it. You can't like. Use it like forward facing sonar. It's not a forward facing sonar. It transition. looks like a weather radar. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, it looks like your side imaging. It just is a round uh, image heard of side imaging. I see this guy here saying something about the Apple. Uh, yeah. Timmy Google from Goggins. Cincy. I've Timmy, are you from Cincinnati? I'd like to know that. And where are you watching from? You'd like to, have you seen those? 
I've seen something on Facebook about the forward facing sonar glasses. Wow. Yeah. I sure have. I've That's, seen that. That I don't think they should do. And the reason I don't think you should do that is because you're not going to pay attention to what's going on around you. If there's some kind of like goggles that you're going to put over your face like that. Yeah. You can't watch boat traffic. Man, you don't know how many times I've got to get on my trolling weekend, motor. This past, this past weekend we was down there. Yep. This, you don't know, a boat coming at us. You don't remember how you don't know how many times I've had to get on my trolling motor and move my boat out of the way from somebody running too close to me. Oh, I'm sure it happens. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like and so you think at that point if they go to the glasses, no, that is a that's, that's gonna dangerous. be dangerous. Yeah. And so Timmy from Cincy is from Cincinnati. And I, I assume you're watching from Cincinnati. So man, thank you for joining us tonight. I I love it when you uh I'm not gonna call you a Yankee. Cincinnati, can we call them Yankees? It's Cincinnati Northern. technically. They're Northerners. Right. What? Northern, uh, Northern. Huh? The they're Yankees. Close. Yeah, they're close. Well, to good. Hey, we, we appreciate it, buddy. Uh, <laughs> they do not block your vision like the goggles do. So yeah, so the ones that we've been seeing, they're like glasses, and so on one one eye it projects the the image kind of what you're seeing on the forward facing, but still. It's like texting and driving and all that. It's still well, why can't takes you. I just look down like they do it. Like, I don't understand. Because people are fussing getting, that they're looking down. Their neck or something. Neck's hurt. It, it ain't. <laughs> listen, I know some guys that walk around like 90-year-old men. You know, they're the scopers. You can tell. That's like where that. the darn Black Hawk helicopter sighting thing is. Or, yes. I mean, the, uh, excuse me, an Apache. It's in one eye is a sight, and then one eye is uh, wherever you're going. All right, so we have we've had confirmation here. They're Yankees. West of Ohio is Yankee, but Brian Marcusen said they're Flatlanders, not Yankees. So <laughs> Cincinnati, has, Cincinnati is not too far north uh, to be in uh, Yankee Yankeeville. Uh, put up, pull up Colton Wilson. And guys, listen, there's a ton of comments coming in. If you have a question that we missed, type it again. Not a fan of the rear facing sonar they have uh, they have on the back of the boats. To me, that just shows guys can't read side imaging. Fair enough. But, I mean, I went out with you, Kevin, and you were showing me side imaging stuff that I was kind of like, I had no idea that's what it was yeah. doing. So not everybody can read side imaging correctly. Yeah, so, I mean, you really have to spend some time with it and look at the, yeah. the details of, you know, what's really there. And, you know, I, I run, uh, you know, different frequencies to see different things. Yeah, so that's, that was one thing I was getting ready to yeah. say, one thing that Kevin taught me when we were out. Oh, uh J.P. Vern outside, don't go just yet because I got a question. We're not going to talk about Ford facing all night, so don't go just yet. I know people are sick of it. I'm going to hit his question real quick, and then we'll get back on it before, before, we, uh, before we lose him. I asked a question, why do fish like garlic? Okay, and a lot of people gave me a lot of different answers, <laughs> like blood, like this, all these different answers. There are times. But he said, he said, take a bite of, take a bite, take a bite of a live shad, and you'll understand why fish like garlic. So next time y'all get around a live shad, save me one. You ain't got to. I'll take the bite. Okay. But he you says, are. so he says that's why garlic. So anyway, um, Danny, I heard. He also jumped out of uh, airplanes. He was airborne. So that tells you sometimes he ain't the brightest. Oh, is he not? Okay. <laughs> he fishes uh -oh. me all the time. I can say that. But I yeah. mean, he jumps out of airplanes and there's no reason to do that. I, okay. So I get, I get, listen, see, you can see in the comment section tonight, there are guys that are just tired of the forward face and stuff. And I am too. But the reason we went with that is because that's what's on the page and also because of this tournament that is coming up on Lake Lanier, April 1st to the 4th. No forward-facing sonar, no Mega 360. You can use traditional sonars. Now, the reason I bring that up is it's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting concept, $300,000 for the first place based upon 200 boats, if they can get 200 boats. Now, now Kevin had a very interesting um, – thought process on this tournament we talked about it beforehand and you yeah. kind of you got pretty animated with it well yeah, and you don't have to get at it but you got but you have your very strong opinion on it so, so you know if you're going to have a tournament and it's not going to be a forward facing sonar tournament because you know everybody's talking about sitting there looking at a screen you kind of you know throwing at fish that you can see so the time of the year that they're going to have this tournament, it's going to be either fish are going to be in right. a staging area or they're going to be sight fishing them off of beds. Right. Yeah. So don't go and catch a 25 pound bag of largemouth and then don't turn it into, Hey, look what we did without forward facing sonar. You know, if you, if you had that tournament at a different time of the year, you're definitely going to have a lot different weight results. 
Yeah, so you um, think it's a timing thing, right? Yeah, now, I mean, right? you know, like I said, you know, hey, it's great to have different tournaments. You know, I, you know, hey, it would be it would be a fun deal to go fish it. You know, it it really would. But you know, it's still that time of the year. That's not going to be a forward facing sonar tournament. That's going to be a tournament that that technology is not going to do you any good anyway. Right. Versus if you were back in the winter time with all your big fishes in the timber or they're out there or deep, um, you know, they're not going to catch the same kind of bags. Yeah. There'll be some big ones caught. There's some guys that know places, you know, to fish, to catch big bags. I'm not saying that you can't catch a big bag right in the winter, but I mean, you're going to see consistent weights that should be, big bags because you're going to, you're going to be, you know, Hey, there's a six pound largemouth on a bed or, Hey, you know, I'm going to fish this spawning pocket over here and I'm going to, I'm going to target these fish under these docks that are moving into these spawning pockets. So mm -hmm. my, my thing, you know, and I'm, I'm sure I'm probably going to tick somebody off with this, but don't turn it into a, a bashing of forward facing sonar, you know, and and with the kind of weights that are going to be brought in, yeah. So for we're, that time of the turn, yeah, for that time of the year. You agree with him? I agree one hundred percent on that one. Yeah. So I, I think what would we say before that? Like, if they held the same tournament in December, or even July. Yeah, I mean that would be a different, a yeah. different scenario. So you said technically, I believe one of your comments was there's no different than a there's no difference still in a guy fishing. looking at a screen. <laughs> yep. Or looking at a bass on bed, it's mm -hmm. still sight fishing. Yep. And so, I mean, I, I like the idea of the tournament, but yeah, I mean, just the time of the year. Yeah, yeah, the timing on that, man. I mean, they're either gonna be on the staging area, they're gonna be on beds. Yeah, and yeah. so you would be more pro of it if it was just at a different time. Well, I'm not, I'm not against any of it. Like I've told you, I don't care if they got it, they don't got it. I mean, I really, honestly believe that there's too many people that have it. To ban it. Yeah. How are you going to ever control that? How are you going to ever, hey, this guy's over here. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're going to have polygraphs and all kind of stuff. Did you use forward facing sonar to catch your fish? I mean, we've kind of come too far now with it to ban it. Yeah. Uh, too much and, money. Uh, and, and I mean, where is your technology going to go? The like, how thing, far? The, the only thing the they can do now is limit the transducers. It's exactly yeah. like what they did with the A rig. They they had they were so many people that had them. Of course, they weren't thousands of dollars, but they started banning at least only three hooks and you know two dummies or no blades or whatnot and so forth, or just three wires or something like yeah. that. At least they can tone it down to where it's a little bit more of a. Uh, of a more equal playing field. I got right. that. So, uh, Michael Geiger, how you doing tonight, buddy? Scott Martin just wanted Okeechobee bed fishing with board face and sonar. And that's even like <laughs> that's like double the right yeah. double whammy. So, but I do I do get your point though. Your premise is regardless of whether you got it or not, that time frame it's a sight fishing tournament, yep. pretty much. This is you know, like I said, they're either going to be back there on beds. Or they're going to be somewhere around the staging area. Right. Yeah, so I, I know how to target them fish. Yeah. That's, that's where they're going to be. Well, and that also, you know, if the guy's got the knowledge of the lake, that's right. going to help him out a ton. Right. $5,000 entry fee. I think it pays down to 40 spots, $13,000 for 40th. So uh, we're going to talk about swim baits. We're going to get it. So everybody, everybody wants to do that. But, I, I, you know, that's just a discussion. Hey, you got to cover the topics that are hot right now. So, um, but we will. We're going to get to that. Before we do that. Before we do that, got another prize right here. Uh, I got four more of these quick ones, and we're going to give away two rods and the option. So, uh, Kevin Thornton, what was one of your questions you sent me? Because you know how I am. I get, I got, my brain is going in one direction. This is for another. Uh, this is for a lipless, arc lipless LP58 and another one of their J110 jerk baits. How do you spell Lake Topakalaga? How do you spell Lake Topakalaga? Toho yes. Palaka. Did I even I say that even right? Say that. Toho is what it's got a lot just, of just says Toho. Okay, how do you spell the proper spelling for Lake Toho? All the way through. All the way through. You guys got to watch it. Give it to the first person. Again, if you're the winner, uh, play Coco Palaka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nope, Gary Murphy, that is not it, but that looks like the way I would spell it. <laughs> 
Topo, yeah, hooked I, on phonics may pay off on this one, boys. Yeah, you go. I'll just buy the bait, Eric Richards. Wow. <laughs> Eric, I got one for you. Hunter fishing. All right, what about? Okay, look at yeah, look at those last three. A lot of you guys are smart. Dad, gummy. Dad, gum. I can't get listen. That they, there's a lot of vowels and a lot of consonants. <laughs> in there. That one. Is that Russian? Hang on. Who won? Hang on, they're popping so fast, and I've got earphones. Hey, and hey, guys, let me tell you this. i got a lot going on. Hang on. Yeah, you do. Dude. You didn't got your earphones on, right? Yeah, I, I'm trying to listen to <laughs> Wingman right here. Wingman. So, y'all pick a winner right there. But I will tell you guys this. While they're finding the winner, if you're watching on Facebook, All and right. who won? I think we've determined uh, scratch fishing. Scratch fishing. Hit me up on Messenger, baby. I'll get you I'll get you these baits out to you. Appreciate Ooh. you watching. Guys, listen. I say this every week with Opson. Uh, when we did the question of the week, if you're watching on Facebook and you're watching on YouTube and you both type in the same time, the YouTube answer will always pop up first. So it pays to watch this on YouTube. It pays us a little bit, but it pays to watch it if you're trying to win these things. So, um, all right, listen, enough, enough of the, enough of the forward facing stuff. We covered it just enough. I wanted to get Kevin's thought on that. Swim baits, everybody in the comments, <laughs> swim baits, swim baits, swim baits. You are well known. You are well known for swim baits. Uh, I am. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Now you're gonna have to educate all of us. Well, it, it's it's it, it's uh, I feel like unfortunately, Brian, I'll take care of you. It's it's I feel like unfortunately, it's it's getting to be what I do is getting to be a dying situation. Yeah. Because everybody's going to the the Chinese knockoff stuff and painting them for ten bucks and selling them for twenty five, and it's getting yeah. our butt. But the people who are actually going out there and actually the the old schoolers, I guess I consider myself an old schooler now. Yeah. Um, that are actually hand whittling a piece of wood and mastering that out to uh, a master mold and then molding it into a production mold and going out and throwing it to, to float it to see where it sinks and how it reacts and how it comes through the water and everything. That's 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 what i do that's a dying breed though you think it's a well now you've got 3d printers everybody now they just lord pull knows up a they screen. do they do yeah. they pull up a screen take a cad shot of it and send it to one of their programmers that's a cad person and now they've got a 3d printed you know model and you know it looks just like a fish and that's all well and good but i i don't i don't have that technology i that don't have that brainology like <laughs> kevin calls me the brainy person or whatever <laughs> Well, yeah, well just in a, just in a way of you know, I've kn I've known Rick for a little while now, and you know, knowing knowing Rick, he's kind of a analytical, very brainy, witty. You told me that kind of. He goes, he's smart. Dude. That's what yeah, he said. He's, he's he a goes, smart he, he dude. Goes, he's smarter than we are. He's a smart. He's yeah. He's probably smarter than smarter than most of us. Yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Rick 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 seems like one of them guys that he wants to match something down to the detail. I'm one of them guys. Hey, let's throw it at that one right there. Throw it up here. Oh, these fish ain't biting. Let's go. He's yeah. kind of more one that, that will pick around, try to, you know, really, really pick out what's detail type stuff. That's right. That's right. Um, let me get let me get just real quick question for Lanier Basson so we can stay on the uh, thing. Would you focus above the bridge or below the bridge for that tournament? That no FFS tournament. Oh, it's um, going to be above. The above. I mean, Not you want, above, right, but below the bridge. Below the bridge. There, towards the dam. It's clear water. You get bigger spots down there. But if you go want large mouth, then, you know, mid lake, river forks area, that lake around Little River, uh, not Little River, Laurel Park, Little Hall. Little Hall, yeah. Right that area, right in there with all those deep pockets back in there going into the shallows. Okay, so there you go. That sound about right? Yeah, I would, uh, I would probably focus more mid lake for that tournament. Mid lake. There you go. I hope that there's your answer right there. Uh, 3D printing takes a little more than that. Buy local. It does, but it, but you do you do kind of get the gist of it. Whereas a guy, because you mentioned hand carving, making the mold, everything. Yeah, I've got a I've got one here that I actually. He's got some molds with him. I, I, there was a question. Want to know what those big round things were? Oh, uh, those are are molds that I, I actually cast uh, uh, lead baits for companies. Making okay. master, you know, uh, 
mastering yeah. those out. Yeah, you almost and said it. I almost said it. I did, but you I almost I said it. <laughs> you almost said it. And listen, you can't open a door for me. Uh, but that's what they look like. You know, it, it's 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 a whole bunch of cavities that you put in a uh, a spin cast machine. And yep. I actually, uh, I work for about three other companies that are that are, that are known pretty good. But uh, and I do their some of their stuff too. Okay. Now, I don't just make swim baits for a living. Right. But good. Yeah, this is what they I are do. molds. So there you go. That's your answer. They are molds for a spin cast. And anybody that doesn't know what a spin cast is, like when I tie a jig up here, I pour them one at a time. When you get these spin casts, you can put that lead in there and it, it'll do anywhere from 20 to 100 at a time, depending it won't on. It be 100. You ain't, uh, I, I don't know. 12 to. 12 to 18. Is 12 to 18. Max. So like this right, right here. So that's a, my math. This is a quarter ounce pulse finesse head. So I, I work. I, it I works for pulse. pulse. There you go. So these are the finesse heads and there's thir there's 12 of them in this cast. So every 20 seconds I can pop out 12 moles. Just bam, bam, bam. Every 20 seconds. Okay. So in a minute's time, I've got 30, 36 baits. Which would take me hand pouring a lot longer than that. <laughs> Trust me, it would. But even even then, though, I mean, you had to come up with that design. Did you? Oh, that was the design they had. Yes, that's their. Oh, design. That's their design. Yep. But so you do that. Yep. Now back to the swim baits. Uh -huh. What uh, I have a few of Rick's old swim baits he made years ago. Yes, Surf Dad, you caught it. Um, <laughs> go to swim bait for Linear. <laughs> I know these comments like it's the guys I hang out with, man. I'm telling you. That's what gets me in trouble. Pull up Mark Garrett's. So I, I want to know kind of how you got into the swim bait game to making them, you know, what, what you did. But I want you to ask answer that question right there because some of these guys might have to go to bed and can't watch the whole show. What's your go-to swim bait for Lanier or Hartwell this time of the year? This time of the year? Or are you even throwing it this time Yeah, of the year? I mean, I'm starting with the when the water temperature gets right in the 50s going into the – 51, 52 degree range. I start looking at them docks going back to the spawning pockets. So those big large mouth, big spots get out of there, getting close to the getting, getting, getting ready. close, getting, getting ready. ready. Uh, that's whenever those big glides start prevailing, and that's when those big swim baits start prevailing. Okay. Um, and I'm talking like your, your nines and your tens, like the hinkle trout, the big or, ones, you know, stuff like that. I don't even make nothing that big, um, but I've got several ones that I have that are what i call carved out okay that's mastered i just haven't produced to them yet yeah so because it takes a lot to get that thing balanced right man i mean you, oh you, yeah for sure understand how hard it is to do all that. right we got questions coming in we're, we're going to get to the history of that but when do you uh when do you both use a soft body like a mag draft or a coal shad versus a hard body like a glad or a multi-jointed bait either one of you guys can answer that what was that now? When do you he wants to know when you throw the soft bodies versus the hard bodies like, I don't even throw a soft body. You don't throw a soft body at all? No, I don't. Okay, there you go. Sometimes what about you? Um, do you even throw glide baits? I do some. I like the double jointed glides, like the bite size herring there. Yeah. Um, You know, like a smaller swim baits, like kayak tech kind of stuff. I throw a lot of that, but I don't really fool around with the whole uh, mag draft thing. I ain't really ever got into that, but I've Pull that up. I've Pull dabbled up. in uh, the glide bait stuff. Yeah. This is what what model is this? I'm That's holding bite size, bite, size. bite size herring. Yeah, and yeah. your company's called Southern Hook Lures, right? That's correct. Yeah, Southern Hook Lures. So, again, at some point, at some point in your in your uh, brain, you said, "I want to develop something." I want to. Did you start off with a jointed one? Yes. Okay, so I you actually started. brought the very first bait that I did. Because I wanted to show people exactly what the very first bait Let me see this. that I looked at. And I, and people are going to look at it and think, why don't you do that now? Because it's difficult. I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. Uh, uh, go ahead and pull that out of the bag. Yeah. That is actually a molded blueback heron. A molded blueback heron. Yeah. So you took a real blueback heron. It, you look at it. I mean, it is yeah. a real blueback heron. And mold. Oh, shit, you pull it out then. I don't want to tear his bait up. That's that's if that's the original, I'm blaming <laughs> on the very first one that we did. He's got a hook. Uh, real quick, when do you throw Sabills? A lot of people throw them near the shad spawn. Yeah, stupid Sabills. Stupid yeah. Sabills. <laughs> you don't need no stinking Sabill, dude. You don't need that's an inside joke. Kevin knows what I'm talking about. Okay, that's well, I guess but that's still. an inside joke. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, um. Yeah. 
break out the glider this time of year. Yes, Jeremiah. Right Absolutely. now we're talking about the cute swim baits under 18 inches or the real stuff. <laughs> He's the guy that's got the the collection. Oh yeah. He's got a collection. He it's his fetish, really. It's, yeah. it's really like he probably needs some counseling. <laughs> I mean, like if we're being honest, he probably needs counseling. I love you there, Jeremiah. You know I do. Yeah. But See, that's like, like rip, 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 rip the bag. Rip the bag. Rip the bag. Um, I know, from the top. What are you looking well, for? It's hooked right here. So, well, just rip it. Just Man said you could. I ain't ripping it's it. Child bait, I'm not your child proof. <laughs> It is. Kevin catches some fish, but he can't get your bait out of you, out of the bag now. <laughs> Folks, if y'all go with him, make sure you bring Ziploc bags he can get into. Don't make it too <laughs> difficult for him. All right. Uh, well, Rick, so, I'll tell you what, brother. He is. He's in a tight spot this here. Before, but I did one like this. I molded a blue back. Blue back. Mm -hmm. Mine didn't turn out that good. Mine looks retarded, like a first. <laughs> like. We Broken, say we say special yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. We say special, special now. Special needs. <laughs> no. Oh yeah. Look at that though. So that is there actually, you if you guys can see it, I try to hold it. That is an actual real molded molded seven inch blue back hair. Your guest mic's volume should be turned up. Hey, look, there's soft speakers, and I'm so loud. So y'all gotta get closer to the thing. <coughs> people want to hear. The people want to hear your voices. They're just they're just soft soft guys. So I uh, wanted to come out with that bait, but the same principle happened with just like the fish head. The keel on the bottom is so small that you just couldn't get the weight right. And if it was off ever so slightly, it it would it would run wanky in my opinion. Wanky. It just wouldn't it wouldn't run. That's a new word. I you don't heard it here. I like my stuff to run true okay and if it doesn't run true and it kind of does what i call y'all out it'll just kind of wobble up right I, I don't like that understand i get that you know, completely. a bait fish don't sit there and go Ooh, you know he's either burning his butt through the water or he's just easing his way around you know he's not unless he's dead and then you're throwing a jerk bait or something like a i, I don't know ain't that something right there i don't have enough talent <laughs> I'm telling you, the guy can. Guy I don't have enough stuff. talent, and I'm actually like, like a first grade. This is the first one did. ever. That's the first one I did. So, like, yeah. it's worth something. I mean, uh, it ain't worth nothing because it don't swim worth crap. Yeah, but now listen, <laughs> this started it all. This started yeah, it all. It did. So that is that. I'm gonna hand that back to you, nice and easy. Uh, I don't right. like. He just grabs it. That's because you own it. <laughs> you own it. He just threw it. He threw the damn box. Right that day, I don't need that. <laughs> All right. So Mark Garrett wants to know: Do you prefer the jointed baits versus the non-jointed baits you make? Jointed versus non-jointed. He must be talking about the fickles. That's this would be the non-jointed bait. Which right, so this like, is the fickle. Yeah, and actually, we're going to give away some fickles. Right, this one of these are fickles. That's a fickle. Yeah, that's the VR two. The VR. It sounds yeah. like a NASCAR commercial here. That's the VR three fickle. This that's is a VR for, three. That's new for this year. Okay, so this is this is a definite hard bait. All right, so the action on this compared to a to a jointed, like a fluke. You work. This is more like, like a fluke. A fluke. Mm -hmm. And then when you stop it, it it it, it acts just like a wonder. It, it, this one, the VR three by accident this was 100 percent by accident this wasn't me trying to copy anybody else's stuff by accident it is weighted a little bit rear weighted so whenever you stop it it still wanders like a wanderer but it wanders back almost like a credge so this was the credge before the credge i don't want to even take pride i don't, want, I don't want, i'll say it okay you can say it you, you, you don't i mean well i say it i mean i don't own either one of them so that's pretty interesting so, it, but the with the credge, the bill kind of helps it go up and guides it back a little Correct. bit. This is more of the weight. Correct. The weight guides it back. Right. Now, how deep do you fish these things? It's just like a fluke. So you want to keep this about three eighths of an ounce, but there's enough flotation in it to where it falls subtle. Okay, so yeah, so you 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 you're targeting the upper water column Correct. with this. Now you can let it sink. I mean, it'll sink just as far as you want to let it sink. And then you can sit there and work it in a 10, 15 foot brush pile over the top of it if you want to, especially with FFS. Okay. You know, that's exactly what it was designed for at that particular time. Right. I love the fickle. It's a heart will killer. Uh, can Kevin tell us how he dishes the finkel? Fish Kevin. The tinkle. <laughs> Fish is how the do you tinkle? How I do mean, you tinkle with a finkel? <laughs> How he dishes the finkel. I'm yeah, thinking yeah, that's I, fish. I remember whenever he said fishing. dishes, he means fishes. I just said dishes because I thought it was funny. How do you fish this? Or oh, are, wow. we, are we on a different bait? Hell, I can't keep up with him. I throw, a, I throw the thing out there and, you know, I'll work it like a fluke sometimes. I'll work it like a jerk bait sometimes. Um, 
you know, you can fish that bait a lot of different ways. Um, it's kind of like a flute meets a jerk bait meets a glide bait kind of to me. Okay. Um, I got it. Working so, uh, right now you got these in Hammonds, right? Uh, the VR2s are in Hammonds. You ain't got the VR3s in there yet? They sold out so fast I didn't even. You, can they buy from your website? Yes. Okay. So I have, I have a gentleman surf dad right there. Wants to know how do I buy some? So can you so, shout out your website? Southernhooklures.com. Southernhooklures.com. Right. Type in FNG, get 50% off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, he's like, that was not what was supposed to be said. But <laughs> and see that right, that bait right there is, is old school. Yeah. And what I mean by that, it was actually molded out of a piece of wood. That is the actual original of the VR3 that was made out Hold of a piece there. of wood. Hit me right there. Yeah, get back. Look, I can get a little bit of Etowah Meadery and everybody in yeah, here. Right right there. It's all about product placement. So this is the original. This is the mold. Yeah. Well, that's the master. That's this is the master. the master. So like right. if my ass gets up and runs out about 100 miles an hour, you're going to chase me, ain't you? Nope. Oh, because you got another one? No. Nope. I've, I've, I've got the mold. You already got the mold. Yeah, I've got the mold. <laughs> so the, so the heck with this. I need to grab the mold. Right. <laughs> it, it ain't worth nothing. So, yeah, go to Southern Hook Lure, southernhooklures.com. Dot com. Correct. And buy that. So absolutely, that's awesome. Um, the fickle works on Latham. Hey, listen, yeah, I, I can imagine now that I've seen it. Um, when you reel it on top, they like it that way too. So there you go. It swims very subtle. It doesn't have a big lot of action. I mean, it doesn't really have a whole lot of action. I, I was actually advertising it or promoting it as the first lipless swim bait. Not a lipless crankbait, but yeah. it's actually lipless. It doesn't have a lip on it like none of my swim baits do. And you could actually reel it, and it'll actually have a little bit of a swimming motion whenever you're whenever you're reeling it. Okay. Which is big on Hartwell. A lot of people don't realize that particular pattern of Hartwell's coming up right after the spawn. Yeah. Before they actually get out there and start doing the herring spawn, you just throw out a fluke is what people used to do. That's all everybody talks about. you can't about get the fluke to run a lot of times, it'll want to roll. And if it does, they won't touch it. Yeah. So that's whenever this thing comes into play, you throw it out there and it just has that real slow, subtle action. And oh, there, there you, you go. go. I like that. Uh, real quick, uh, I had a question. Uh, deep, shallow. That's all you got to answer. BFL, where'd you catch your fish? Caught mine deep. Huh? Deep. Deep. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I, I saw that question up there. Let's see. It was Jake's. Jake's. I can't say anybody's name tonight. Sisavath or Sisavath right there. But anyway, um, I'm seeing all kinds of comments to this. So this is this is pretty good. Uh, headed to the site tomorrow. Great looking bait. So there you go. Hey, listen, we got you some business, right? That's what we're that's what we're here for. We're, we're gonna raise everybody up, give them business. <laughs> Not everybody, but most of them. Um, let's see, pull up Peter W. Oh, okay. You got yeah, I've got one of the Finkel caught a bunch on that thing, but yeah, I'm gonna read all these comments. Getting ready to do the question of the week. And with the question of the week tonight, I'm gonna give away an arc rod. So you got a chance to win fifty dollars off at Option USA and an arc uh Cobb series rod. Uh, I have to give major props to Kevin for the fickle. It's a very cool lure, and sorry for my typos. It's totally cool, dude. I got fat fingers. I know I get it. We don't grade you on you that. Gotta you got to give props to Rick. He's the one that's with that fickle. Oh, did I read? I just throw the thing. He makes the thing. <laughs> oh, I read. I didn't even catch that. I'm glad you caught that. I'm just trying to read so fast. So there you go. Um, Colton, we have no idea who's going to win with that no scope on tournament on there. We'll have to wait and see who enters that. Yeah, we'll see who enters that. And then we, we might have it. We might do a one of those uh, kind of round robin tournaments, give away a prize. <laughs> Uh, nice website. Good luck, sir. Baits look awesome. Surf Dad, why are you doing looking at his website while you're watching this? Um, that's awesome. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and knock that out real quick. And then we're gonna get back on the swim bait. So what I've got is I've got a Cobb series seven foot one medium extra fast. All right, we're gonna do that, and we're gonna give you the $50 discount code to opsonusa.com. Again, we're kind of celebrating our hundredth uh episode as known as the live well we've done more but this is the 100th episode as the live well so we appreciate you guys helping us grow with this uh kevin yes read that question out because my phone's off so um this again is it how many parts it has two answers two parts listen when you type in your answer when you type in your answer don't give just one make sure you type in two so again for for the Cobb series Seven one medium extra heavy actually, medium extra fast spin rod and fifty dollars off at optionusa.com. So you can get that spin rod and you can order you some kick butt fluoro for a liter. 
All right, so go ahead. Throw that question out there for us. What angler won three consecutive Bassmaster Angler of the Year titles, and what year did he win his third title? Uh, read it again. What angler won three consecutive Bassmaster Angler of the Year titles, and what year did he win his third title? Okay. You know that answer? Either one of you know the answer? You can't say it, but you think you know? I like a no, but. All right, keep it in your head. So it'd be like that playing game we did before where we we're trying to read Kevin's mind before the thing. I'm telling you guys, if you're ever in the area up here, you need to come up here before the show one night and just the conversations are always a lot better. It's a but lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Lot of From fun. 7 o'clock to 8 to 8, do we go live? We actually get boring here at about 8 o'clock. It's a lot more fun. Um, so you guys are watching that, and we're going to go with the next question that I see. What's your most productive swim slash glide bait for spotted bass if he wants to target specifically spotted bass oh it's gonna be a mega bass no i'm with i think we're talking about one of your baits i thought it says spro mcstick oh that was i'm reading a different question oh, okay that question i said has done gone up i'm sorry is that the right one peter w That's right. roland right. martin he won his third one in 73 all right congratulations peter this is what i need you to do i need you to hit me on messenger on facebook danny Pruitt. Give me your address, or if you're in the area, you can come pick it up, and I will give you the code for Opson, and you can come up and pick up this uh, Cobb Series rod from Mark Rod. So that's pretty cool right there. So appreciate all you guys watching. I got one more rod to give away, and we've got two of his. What all we got in these prize packs? We're going to do two more questions, and you get a – what is that again? That's a fickle. That's a, a fickle, junior fickle. A junior fickle. Yeah, and, and those are tech heads. Tech that's, heads. Yeah, that's my newest uh, swim bait. Uh, heads that you can put Kitex or Zoom flukes on the back. There you go. Um, that's made with Gamagatsu hooks, spring lock keepers. You know, listen, man, we come bearing gifts tonight. So there you go. <laughs> so you'll have to, we'll do another question here in about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. So, but again, congratulations to Peter W. Um, so anyway, so the question was, uh, what's the location of the shop? 11262 Highway 53, Marble Hill, Georgia. 30148. Sounds like it's in the middle of Boom, Egypt, because it is. Um, if you know where Big Canoe is, between Dawsonville and Jasper, that's where we're at. So green building with the open sign only on one side, so people fly right by. It. Is that what yes, you did? We, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down at the rock quarries wearing my hat. So, um, but again, if you were targeting spotted bass with your baits, what would be the first one that you would choose? I did not bring one, but I would be choosing the uh, uh, my snack size herring. Snack size herring. Yeah, that's my favorite one out of. And so, what is snack size? It's a four inch bait. Four inch bait. Four inch. But it's well, I take that back. We do have one. All right. So this right here is a snack size. What'd you call it again? Snack size herring. Snack size herring. All right, I was right. So this would be the first thing you would pull out. Because it matches about the same size of a herring. It does. It does. And the paint job, yeah, I mean, that that's very herringy looking, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Would that be the first one of all his baits that you would choose, Kevin? Nope. What would you choose? knows what i choose. <laughs> what would Everybody you, knows what, what i would choose. What would you choose? Bite-size herring. Bite-size herring. Yep. Like yeah. Like the snack style. I like the full size. Hair. All right, so, so, <laughs> so what we have here is a difference of opinion. So the man that makes the lures is going with the snack size. Yes. The man that throws the lures is going with the bite size. Yes, sir. And so it's really what it's about two inches difference or an inch difference. Something like that. Something like that. Both look fantastic. Now, I asked earlier, somebody had a question. Would you, do you like, did, did we ask that question? Do you like the jointed over the hard bait? Did you have a preference on which one of those you like to throw? It depends on what kind of year, what, what time of the year. Let's say right uh, now. Right now, I'd be throwing the jointed bait. You'd be throwing the jointed bait because it gives a little more action. And triggered. And I wanted to ask you a question. This is for me because you mentioned docks. Right. And I know a lot of guys will take – they'll take the big mag drafts or other kind, and they will throw at docks. When you do that, how are you targeting the dock? How are you making your cast at that dock? I'm throwing right beside the dock, and I'm moving my trolling motor over ever so slightly. So whenever it gets below, it goes under the dock. So you're bringing this thing I'm under. bringing it under the dock. Right? Kind of strolling it a little bit. Yes, I'm letting it get down a little bit. I'm just feeling for it. My forward face of sonar is off. Yeah. I don't have it on. When you're shallow, you don't That's even right. use it. Uh -huh. I don't. Now, largemouth, 
and spots yes. with that technique. Yes. This time of but the year. more large mouth and spots. That's what I was getting ready to say. Right, right now, this time of year, you're, you're going for that big that's Becky. Going for big large mouth. Going for Becky. That's what Kaz Anderson Last year, I was so mad at that BFL that was canceled because it was canceled on Saturday because I think it was wind or rain or something. Was I, I was so on them. I was so on them. It wasn't even funny. <laughs> and the wind had blown through there and the rain was had muddied everything that I had totally up. I mean, I still caught five. Yeah. And that's what I'm known for is catching five. So, but that's what you, that was what you were going to do. I was on them so bad. I was so stoked for that tournament. And then they called it that night. And I was like, oh my goodness gracious. Maybe I can still, maybe that didn't blow my place out. Man, it blew my stuff out. It looked like chocolate milk. Yeah. So, and it's all visual. Is it, I was going to ask you, this is more clear water. Yep. Clear water visual. Clear water visual. That's what I've got confidence in. Now, that's not what. You know, I mean, there's places where you can throw it in stained water. Yeah. You know, I mean, the fish don't care. It's all, it's all here. in your head. It's all in your head. It's not. In but you want that clear water. I want clear water, right? Yeah. That's it. We asked, we asked uh, Brooks Anderson that question last week clear water or stained water? A lot of guys this time of year, especially the largemouth power fishing guys, always say they want stain, stain right water, now. Right. He come out and goes, clear water. I want the cleanest water. What about you? Clear or clean? Right now? Uh -huh. The water temps where they're at right now? I want clean water. Right. You, what's the water temps? Uh, right around 52, 53, but mm -hmm. we're getting borderline where that stime will switch over to sane water. So yeah, there is a temperature there that yeah. I'm looking for in that stain. So water. when that when that temperature hits that mark, you're going to stain. Yeah, I will. I will fish both. Yeah, um, but I will start incorporating some more stained water stuff in what I'm doing. Okay. Um, but I will still also uh go fish clear water also um there's fish on both sides of that yeah and if you know how to target both groups of fish you can have some success with both okay uh, yeah. groups of fish that's interesting there you go so uh pull pull up the one right above it above him first and then we'll go to michaels what is the best advice both guys have for a high school angler on lanier you've been around longer we're gonna get you first you're the okay. sage you're not, you're not like Bill. Are we fishing from? Is this high school we're fishing from the back of the boat to BFL, or is he fishing uh, on a boat on the bank? Where, where, where is he fishing? At? We're gonna assume he's in a boat because of these high school tournaments. Okay, um, he may be on the front, he may be on the back, but he's in a boat. Near, bar none, especially this time of the year, I'm dock fishing. Um, really, I'm dock fishing. I am. Yeah. <clears throat> those big spots get under those docks this time of the year. The the it, the 50 degree range is my pivotal point. Right when it goes from 49, 50, 51, I'm dock fishing. Okay. I am. Especially. Be careful with what you say there, dog. I see. Uh, you got to think about that answer. I'm looking for shallow, sandy pockets with docks. Okay. Short pockets. I'm not looking for long, deep pockets. I'm looking for shallow, sandy, short pockets. And there's a ton of them on in there. With docks. With docks. With docks. Yes. Okay, that's good. You know what was interesting? And I'm gonna get if Kevin. I fish yeah. that tournament in March, which is the BFL coming up on Lanier yeah. the night. I'm fishing docks. You're fishing docks. I'm fishing docks. Um you mentioned spots. A lot of people don't think spots get up shallow. They got this mindset that spots are out still deep and all that. They are. They are, but there's always some resident oh, fish. Yeah, absolutely. I caught one Saturday in a tournament. Big blowdown. I said, I'm going to chuck a spinnerbait across that blowdown, figuring I might get Becky, the yeah. largemouth. It spot. blew up on it, and I thought it didn't have me a big in the way it hit it. It was like a 2-8 spot. But I caught that spot in about, I would say, four to five foot of water. Right. But it came out from under the blowdown and just annihilated my spinnerbait, right. which makes sense when you're talking about docks. We, we used to fish shallow this time of the year with a fluke ahead. That's what we used to call it. We would throw a fluke ahead, watch for that fluke. And a lot of times those big females, they won't come up and hit it. They're going to come up, inspect it, and go right back down. And then you take a, a shaky head, throw right back over there, or Senko, throw right back over there where that fish come up, and almost 90% of the time that fish is going to get it. You know, that's interesting because I've heard a lot of guys talk about the big the big mag drafts. They don't use it to catch fish. They, they use it to target. move, to move, move fish. Them. Right. Kind of like a muskie. The, right. the guys want to move that muskie. Same question to you. For this young high school kid? High school kid. What's the best advice you can give them right now? So the advice that I would give for not just on Lanier, but anywhere, is to learn what your fish do. Right. Focus energy on learning seasonal movements, migration, 
um, what is the forage, um, you know, learn that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you'll, you'll, you'll be successful. You'll, you'll start having more success. If you focus more on what your fish are doing and learn your fish, you, you're bound to have more success. In the details. Yep. It's all in the details. Yep. That's good advice right there. Now, Michael Temples wants to know, does a customer need to tune the baits any, or do you do that before you package them? Every bait that I make gets tested three times. Okay. Before I put them in a package. They get so you do it. it three times. You do it. It gets tested for flotation whenever I get done making it. Yep. Then I take every single one of them, hook them up, put tails on them. They don't have paint on them yet, but I hook them up, put tails on them. I take them right down the road five miles from my house, which is uh, Broken Bridges on Lake Hartwell. Uh huh. And I test them right there on the dock. If make they sure they run true. I make sure they run true. If they don't, they get turned. The front nose gets turned sideways and it gets put in a separate box. It don't even get looked at again until I have some other time and then I'll take them back to the lake and I'll check them and see if there's some of them that I have. I don't know what the difference. I don't know what happens in the process, but there's some of them. They'll just won't run. Just will not. But run. you do the quality control Absolutely. beforehand. And then after okay. I ta- and That's after good. they're painted, I go back to the lake, hooks, tails, the whole shooting match. And I run a clip when I'm paint when I'm when I'm testing. Yeah, yeah. I don't tie every one of them on, you know, I mean you go through a bunch of line, we're doing a hundred swim baits. Yeah. I so <laughs> and my teeth <laughs> already look like a I gotta tie this knot again. Yeah, my teeth yeah. already look like a messed up beaver because I'm sitting here chewing line all the time. Messed up beaver. That's right. <laughs> you know what that you know what that makes it time for? Tim, you know what's in my mind right now? Oh just so we got it, say it. Say it. Say it, Kevin. Yum, yum. Say it louder. Yum, yum. All right, now go. <laughs> yum, yum. All right, there we go. We got it. We got We got it. Everybody said yum, yum. We're good oh, to go. We're good to go. Right, we got man. it for that video. is going to come out one of these days, boys. You said we're beaver. Gonna be. You said beaver. <laughs> We're going to lead a rear end double bad. We are. We're <laughs> a bad joke somewhere. Are, oh, you said it. But I appreciate you doing that. But now, yeah. Yeah, but see, I know Michael Temples. He's a detail guy. So that's important to him. And I know a lot of these guys that paint baits, and some are local. Let's just say North Georgia area. Um, they call out nobody. Let me see that glide bait right you want, there. Which one? This one yeah, right here? This one right here. A lot of guys will <laughs> get, a, get, get baits. They'll paint it, stick it in a package, sell it. You don't know how many times I've had people call up. We sold one. I can't get this thing to run right. I cannot get it to run right. And like it, I don't think it was ever tested. Yeah. They just paint it, package it, go. If anybody ever has a problem with any of my stuff, yeah, I deal with it personally. It's not I, I take it personally. It's my name that's on this. Yeah. So if somebody has a problem with something that I've made, yeah, I either say, hey, let me meet you at the lake wherever lake that might be or let me meet you at a, or a store and if i can't fix it at that particular point i give them a brand new one. i don't i don't mess around with saying well you could be doing this or you should be doing that or it's not running right because you're using it wrong i'm not that kind of guy yeah gotcha. you know i know how this thing's supposed to run i know what it's supposed to do yeah and i know everybody else knows that how they're supposed to run and what they're supposed to do your reputation's on the line that's absolutely uh, that, that's a good answer all right so now um Got a question for you guys. I'm going to give a catalyzer arc rod and one of these packs. I know they ain't supposed to give that away. That's when you handed it to me. That's right. So this is the fickle. Did I say it right? There's so many words. Yes, that's the junior fickle. Junior fickle. And then. And that's the VR2. That's the VR2. That's new for this year. New for this year. Yep, that's a, so, no, that's not the VR2. That's the. Uh, that's you making my, me lie? I am. Yeah, that right there is the tech heads. That's tech heads. Yeah, that's okay, so a fickle. Tech head, pack of tech heads from Southern Hook Lures, and then a catalyzer, arc catalyzer, uh, seven three medium heavy fast. Okay, this is going to be a little bit harder for you guys. So a hundred episodes ago, we started calling the show the Live Well. It used to be called Thursday Night Live. So what we did beforehand was we put it out to the audience to give us suggestions on a new name. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so here it goes. So who named the show? If you guys remember back in the day, there was a, a particular viewer who uh, gave the suggestion for the live well. Haven't seen him around in a little while, but he's still out there. He pops up from time to time. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. The guy used to kill everybody 
used to absolutely kill everybody when we would do any question or giveaway. Boom. Right there. All right. Uh, no, it was not Jim Farmer. I promise you it wasn't Jim Farmer. Justin Sisavath. Buddha. Nathan Dung. All right. So I, I knew somebody would know that. That's 100 episodes ago. Actually, plus. Actually, plus. So congratulations, wow. Justin. You've got a lot of loyal uh, followers following. There is a home. listen. There is a lot of guys that got nothing better to do on Thursday night than <laughs> listen to me. All right, so Justin, uh, I reach out to you, um, and we'll figure out a way to give you that rod and the fickle and the tech head. Yep. Right. That's correct. All right, so I got one more set. I'm gonna go ahead and do this and do it again. I got one more fickle and another pack of uh, tech heads. So, who was our very first guest? On the first live well, I'll give you a hint. Young guy, very first guest on the very first live well. I'll send you a fickle and tech heads, pack of tech heads. So I know that answer. So I, I think I gave it to you too, didn't I, Kevin? Yep. Okay, so you got it. Um, 12 pound test, medium heavy. 12 pound test, medium heavy. That was a question. Somebody yeah. want to know what you threw it on? Yeah. You throw the fickle on 12 pound test, medium heavy. Spin? No. Baitcaster. Baitcaster. Yeah. Okay. You All can right. throw it. You can throw it on spinning rod, but I throw everything on baitcaster. Kaz was not. Kaz was not the first one. You guys got to. You might actually have to go back. Thank you, Kim Burke, on hundred. We actually had about two hundred episodes, but um, we just started calling it the live well. So Jason Johnson, no, not Kaz, guys. It's not Kaz Anderson because I said young guy. You thought that. I will give you this. His daddy is a real good fisherman too. Oh my. No, it ain't Paul March. His debt, and it was not Jimbo. I said it was a young guy. Jimbo's my age. So think, think, uh, think, no, not Rob. So think, um, think MPFL. That might, that might help you. Think MPFL, young angler. Millsap. Are you going to win your own baits? <laughs> huh? Huh? You trying to win your own baits? You didn't say it. You don't talk loud enough for anybody here. Somebody's anybody. already got it right there. Jake Brooks. Yeah. Logan Millsaps. Logan Millsaps was on the very first, very first edition of the Live Well. So uh, hit me up. Hit me up on uh, Facebook so I can get your address, and I will Where did put, it go? Huh? Everywhere. Yeah, right there. Jake Brooks, Logan. Logan they Millsaps. Fire, they fire so many stuff. They scroll. do. It's hard to keep up with. So, okay. So we got rid of all the stuff now. So, hey, listen, guys, I appreciate you guys joining in for that stuff. It's always fun. Um, how about that? Go, yeah, I saw that question. Go up a couple. Go up a couple. I can answer that. Uh, down a couple. I can't believe you guys put Jimbo down, and I like Jimbo, but he ain't young. All right. Yes, sir. You can sling a pistol, cast it. Okay, there you go. How yeah. would you target a fishery dominated by Elwife, and undoubtedly he must fish Carters? Uh, well, uh Al wife and blueback carrying are exactly the same. Yeah, they're kind of like cousins, ain't they? Yeah. I mean, just they're kissing cousins, except for one on the inside. Now, this is from somebody that lives up in Connecticut that has nothing but Al wife, and this okay. a good friend of mine, Terry Backsay. Uh huh. He says the only difference between the two is the bloodline inside their body. Really? They're almost the same color. To they are. There's, you, if if I held the L wife up and I held a blueback, you wouldn't be able. To you would not be able to tell the difference. Uh, the inside line, the inside of their body, inside under their guts, like you know, you have that line. Yeah, it's bluish gray instead of clear, like uh, like on the blueback. And I've heard that L wives, the guys at Carter's tell me this: L wives tend to go a little deeper, deeper. than the yeah, blue. They don't come right. up to the surface as much as blueback. right. So if you got a lot of top water action, it's more likely to be blueback. Right. And yeah, because so that's what I've heard. And again, I'm not an expert on any of that. So. Um, have we did, all right going down? Did we miss any of that? That's funny. Some of you guys, your answers there. Uh, hello, guys. This is Alan Brooks, TAA founder. Ah, there you go. Thanks for the plug and talking about our tournament, enjoying the show. First time here, Alan. Uh, open invitation if you want to come on and actually talk about it before the tournament actually happens. Absolutely. So, you got an open invitation. If you can't do it on Thursday, we'll do it on, we'll figure out, we'll figure it out like that. Um, so yeah, but. Very interesting thing that you got going on there. So you got a lot of guys talking, and we'd love to interview you and kind of figure out where you're going to go with it from here. So, uh, and you can thank uh, Brooke Anderson's dad, Andy, for the one that kind of told me about that. Uh, let's see, Kevin, do you prefer a specific jerk bait, Spro versus Mega Bass, etc.? I think the gold standard is the Mega Bass on the one tens, Vision one tens. 
And I, I tend to throw a silent one when I do throw it. You like a silent? Yeah. You were looking more for the visual? Well, they got the lateral line. They can feel that thing anyway, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think they feel a lot more stuff than what you realize. Okay, so that's going to lead to my next question. Do you think rattles and baits is overrated? Given the fact that they do feel the vibration? So if if I was in muddy water, I would tend to use a louder bait or a bait that has more kick or a bait that just puts more thump in the water. In clear water, I'm going to go a little quieter. I'm going to throw, you know, like uh, I throw a lot of the DT crankbaits. Um, they don't have no rattles or anything. Right. Um, you know, I will tend to use stuff like that in the clear water, stuff a little more noisy, a little more thump in the stain. Would there ever be a situation in clear water where you would think you would need a rattle? Not really. Yeah, I was just wondering. Not just really. Curious. So there you go. Stained water, rattles. Not really. Clear water, don't need it. You agree with that? <clears throat> Absolutely. So, okay, so y'all on the same page right there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Colton Wilson. All right, Mr. Steckelberg, do you ever come out and fish tourneys with us guys on Hartwell? I fished uh, I fished the 55-year-old tournament at, a, at, at Hartwell out of Broyles. Okay. Uh, I got third in the first one, and the next one's coming up, I think. Just next Thursday. Do they up. call it the 55 year old division? 55 and over. That's better. So they don't say senior citizen division. <laughs> listen, but I'm right there with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be right, right there. I'm going to be getting triple A discounts. I, listen, I get AARP mail already. I'm like, dang, boys, slow down. I can fish that next year. And listen, Kevin, we know you've been getting it for a decade or two now. We get it. <laughs> two decades. Kevin's been getting that. So uh, them swimsuits, males or females? I, unless he's talking, I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, oh. Swimsuit? Or, I, I don't even know what that question is. Hey, Ray Keys, you need to elaborate on that question a little bit more. Um, unless he's talking swim about baits the, are male or female. Are the swim baits male or female? <laughs> don't know. Or he might be talking about that calendar we're going to do with Bardet. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Moving you want to be in that calendar? Uh, what month do you want? I'll tell you. Pick a month, and then I'll tell you what you got to do. This is going to be for charity. Pick a month. Oh, man. Is it going to be part of the yum yum thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yeah, uh, anyway, wow. Uh, pick a month. Pick a right, month. Okay. As long as that's okay. No yum yum. As, all right. No, no yum. you're off the hook on that one. Okay. Right, off the hook on that one. Pick all a right, month. Uh, I guess I do October. All right. You commit to it. You're going to do it. October. Go ahead okay. and commit to it. Just say yes. All right. Then. All so, right. what we're going to do is we're going to get 12 anglers to dress up in thongs okay. and pose. For a fish, North Georgia, sexiest men of the lakes, swimsuit calendar. Now you can go as thick as you want on the front or as needed, but in the back, it's got to be a thong. All right. Okay, good. So, Kevin, all right, good. We got to commit. <laughs> Jonathan Farmer said he was going to do December. Bar day is going to be the centerfold. In between, we're going to have a two page bar day because he's a big boy, it takes two. So we're going to do that. <laughs> Rick, you know you want in on this, boy. <laughs> Rick, step, While you're here, would you like a month, sir? Uh, <laughs> My ears are turning red. It's for, it, it's for charity. <laughs> Whose charity is going to pay for that? No, no, we're going to give them the money. They, we, they, we, they're going to pay them not to sell it. They're going to pay us more <laughs> to not for get not getting the book. Gonna... <laughs> but listen, I want to November. November? Mark him down. <laughs> I believe that's like contractually binding. Once you got my that. birthday's in November, so I think my birthday be fine. Frontal or back shot? Oh, it's definitely gonna be a front shot. Oh, <laughs> oh. Front shot. I've made sure I've got oh. it all on camera. <laughs> the man's carrying a squirrel in his pants. Uh -oh. All right, there we go. Lord, Chewbacca, Chewbacca, Chewbacca. <laughs> that's what. Listen. He, he is no longer going to be called Rick. We're going to call him the squirrel from now on. The bite Wingman's size back there vapor locking no, again. No, it's, it's the bite size, not the snack size. Oh, there's a rabbit hole. Uh, is Kevin vapor locking? Kevin's back almost there? in vapor lock <laughs> mode. Y'all can't see it. Right Anybody know CPR in here? <laughs> you guys got it because listen, he, listen, he's old. He's old. Like, I mean, if he passes out back there, I ain't. I mean, I'd kiss you, Kevin, if I had to. But. No tongue. All right, so here we go. All right, so get back to the thing. Just tell me when Kevin comes out of vapor lock. Um, he's breathing. We're he's good. He's breathing. We're good. All right, Kevin's good. How shallow are the docks in the sandy pockets there, Rick? 
how deep are we looking at when you're targeting oh, five dogs? foot at the front? Five foot at the front. Yeah. So I don't see. be out on the main lake throwing at that thirty foot dog. Uh -uh. You're gonna be, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking the front where the boat goes in is five foot. Five foot. Oh, yeah, you're shallow. shallow. I'm talking skinny, shallow. skinny water. Yes. And that that magic and temperature. People won't believe it, but there, there's some people I don't know if they're watching right now, but they fished with me and they know. They know. They know. Okay. All they right. Know. And what was that magic temperature when this you start doing this water temp? Exactly what it is right now. Right now. One fifty two. Three. Listen, everybody this Saturday gonna be beating dogs. <laughs> I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say how we done it or how we target them, but we've already caught some of them fish. Yeah, yeah, a couple people out there. Okay, last week. there's you some juice right there. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> wasn't really doing what he was talking. No, about. I wasn't doing. You what wasn't, but still the same kind of mentality. You both, you guys were approaching. Yeah, D different techniques. You know, you know they're there. You know, oh, yeah. uh, you know, like I said, old school guys. They just know what these fish do like i said learn like a high school kid a while ago learn what your fish do different times of the year you'll be more successful yeah makes perfect sense to me uh i love the fact that the 55 and over tournament uh trail as a trail schedule it, oh it's handwritten so so whoever <laughs> made the schedule is handwritten because what you trying to say scratch <laughs> they can't use computers they out there. Type it up. great penmanship you Did you write it? No. Okay, so what not you? All right, great penmanship. I've got the actual. Uh, uh oh. I've got uh, he didn't get his reading specs on. Look, look, look at he is. That's hell. That's why he fishes at fifty five. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I got no room to talk. I can. I'm eligible after uh, this year. Kevin, you understand that right there? Miss Sylvia is watching. She's dying. Oh, she's probably laying in the floor laughing. Just hell, that is neat handwriting. <laughs> That looks like somebody took a calligraphy class. I can't say calligraphy, right? Good Lord. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is as well wow. handwritten as a, I assume a man can do. That's and almost like the Declaration of Independence. And, Kiwi, they, and Russell, they actually do Clark Hill. Clark Hill? Oh, there's another tournament series that he does on the next Thursday. It's on Thursday, so it's not on the weekend, so you're not beating yourself to death. So it's actually uh, – they have some on Clark Hill and Russell. Did Randy Cottrell write that? I think so. I think he's white. I was about to say that looks like that. That has to be. That's that's too nice. <laughs> she definitely does like wedding invitations and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Sylvia, it's funny here. Our enhancements allowed. That's ham sandwich. You remember me telling you about ham sandwich, Steve? We already talked about you earlier today. I gave I gave Rick a kind of a visual explanation of the ham sandwich. So we got questions, right? We got oh, questions. Um, what's going to happen to these kids next? Looking down at Live Scope for eight hours a day. They are hey, doing it with their are, cell phones. Are, so yeah, they are. Matter. They already got. You look at. Now. They are. Everybody's You're absolutely looking down correct. Anyway. It, you don't need to be forward facing sonar. They got their face in something. Mm -hmm. We grew up playing in mud. Yeah. Drinking out of the water hose. Yeah. They fishing, fishing trout streams. That's it. In nature. That's looking, it. Looking under logs, looking for snakes and stuff. That's what I did. I and think. getting in trouble for bringing them in the house and all that. I got beat by my, my mama. Oh, killed me. oh, oh my goodness I got. I go down to that pond that <laughs> me and my wife were talking about before yeah. the show, and I would I'd catch a five or six pounder, and and Daddy wouldn't let me keep them, but I'd bring them up and put them in my mama's bathtub and fill it up. And so I want to show Dad when he got home. I was proud of it. my mom would come home and just she'd be on the phone with my dad like, get your ass home. Get these fish out of my bathtub. <laughs> and then I have to scrub the bathtub and stuff down. Uh, Colton Wilson wants to know your favorite Demiki bait and size weight to throw. Let's start you off with that, Kevin. Favorite Demiki style bait? Uh, let's see. I'm kind of more of a jig and minnow kind of guy. Jig and minnow kind of guy. Jig and minnow. Just, you know, standard ball head, flute style bait. Yeah. I got you. All right. What about you? Uh, Demiki Armor Shad. Demiki Armor Shad. So you actually use a Demiki product. I do. Okay. I do. Any tips on how you throw it? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I throw it wherever Kevin's throwing his at. Kevin? <laughs> Kevin? Any tips? No, I, mean, I don't want to get in there. It might be secret sauce. Give me the sugar free version. Uh, you know, I'll use them for search baits. Uh, you know, I'll throw them over timber. I'll throw them in the points, humps. Catching them perch, too. Catching perches. Hey guys, he showed me. Perch a, jerking. He is. <laughs> perch jerking. We perch you heard jerking. it here first. Hey, we folks. caught one today. That's what I was getting ready to say. He we showed caught one today. Yeah. Guys, he showed me a picture. And I think it'll come better from Kevin than me. 
Tell them what was in the mouth of this perch. There was two crawfish and a jigging minnow style bait. He took a picture, and it, seriously, that fish had, had his bait in one corner and two crawfish in it. Good like, looking crawfish, too. Good looking crawfish. Like, but that's the definition of gluttony. I mean, that I'm joker was feeding. You, I'm telling you, them, them perches, man. You know, I don't really think we realize how many of them's in Lanier. You There's should. A ton now. of them in Lanier. You've caught some big ones, too. Yeah. Um, I had a guy catch one that was yeah, one just pound. Don't, just don't show the bait. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't show, show the bait. bait. Well, the I, bait's not on there. It's yeah. in there. Okay. So now you can't see the bait. I don't know Sorry. if you can see that. I I slid it over so the bait ain't being showed, but it's showing up pretty good. There is two full size crayfish and another bait in that thing. Yeah, he was hungry. Dude, that's like, yeah, big time. All right, let's see. Question for Kevin. I'm fishing my first BFL on Lanier. How will I find out who my boater will be? Any good tips for the back of the boat? You'll find out Friday night. The Friday night before is when they tell you. Yeah, and generally, your boater calls you. Right, they Sometimes. call you as well. They give you a computer generation that sends through your text message to your phone. Okay, all right. So, back of the boat, good tips. Um, you know, of course, you should communicate with your boater, find out if he's gonna fish shallow, find out if he's gonna fish deep, find out if he's gonna lie to you about what he's fishing. <laughs> yeah, <find laughs> out if, really, you know, certainly right, they would really that. come oh, prepared yeah. to fish shallow, come prepared to fish deep. Um, you know, if I was going to fish off the back of the boat in the timber, I would, you know, and and I was a co-angler, I'd probably just sit there and hang a Demiki style bait off the back of the boat. The keep it simple. Time. Keep it simple. Just you know, maybe tie your fluorocarbon, you know, to touch the timber tops. I, I know this is a lot of juice, but I would, I would probably have about a. 35 foot fluorocarbon leader that I could drop down into the water to when my knot was close to the water. I know I'm close to the tops of the timber. And I would sit there and I would hang that thing underneath that boat all day long. That is smart. You dig, I'm right. It is. That is smart. That's some juice for y'all right there. There you go. I'm so, not a co angler on the back of the boat. So there y'all go. <laughs> but, but that is smart. I don't think a lot of people think about that. Have your leader yep. to what you think. Have it matched to where that timber line is. They clear cut that timber down to 45 foot most places. Did they get it perfect? Nope. But generally speaking, that's where you're going to run into it. And just while the boater's just doing whatever he's doing, off the back just, of the boat and just hang out. That's that's as good as any advice that I've, I've heard. Yep. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. It does. That actually yep. makes, especially the line thing. Yep. Because that way you're consistent. Yep. You don't need you don't need the sonars and you you're go. consistent. Either that or take a marker and mark the line on your on your braid or something yep. like take that. Take like a permanent marker and just make a black line on it. When you get to that black line, there's the timber line. You don't have no you don't have no no way of knowing. Yeah. You know, and you know, I would I would get something that was relatively pretty heavy that I could get down there pretty quick. I would like three eights all day. That is smart. I, that you know what that's i'm like i'm really impressed with that answer because that's something you, i don't i've never thought and if about you got a thermocline set it right above that thermocline mm -hmm. oh don't don't say that no yeah say yeah that. but no still that's smart yeah there you go so hey listen that's as good of any advice i've ever heard for a, for a co-angler because mm -hmm. you're really up to the you don't it, have no forward-facing sonar if you're gonna play the game and he's gonna get out there and scope all day yeah yeah that's smart. And I'd leave it in the water when you net his fish, too. Net his fish, leave your rod hanging in the water, net his fish, hand him the net, his fish. Let him take care of it. Leave your rod in the water. There you mm -hmm. go. I like that. That's a good answer. You agree with that answer? Absolutely. Because yeah. most of the time, what's going to end up happening is there's not just one fish he's fishing for. Nope. There's several fish down there, and they're fighting over it. And so a lot of them will follow. Yep. A lot of them will follow. He's going to bring them all to the he, boat he, right there where your line's hanging. He's bringing the pack. There you mm -hmm. go. All right. There's just some F and keep, it behind, out there. keep it behind the console. Just keep it. There you go. I like that. That's a great answer. Uh, Stephen W. wants to know, jig, shaky head, or crankbaits in them docks? Uh, shaky head or a jig. Now, the shaky head, if it's cloudy, I'm throwing a uh, green pumpkin with a chartreuse tail. And if it's sunny, I'm throwing something more on the clear side. 
whether it be sand or icicle or watermelon, but still Woo! with the chartreuse tail. <clears throat> yeah, chartreuse tail is a big deal. Yeah. And we can't figure out why spots like chartreuse. Blue. Yeah, Blue. but I've, I've been told that it doesn't look like chartreuse underwater. That it just turns into a shade. Who's looking underwater at their tail? The fish. <laughs> listen, I don't yeah, know. But you pull a bluegill out of the water, their tails are almost like it's they're they're somewhat almost chartreuse. It's like a red. It's like a redfish. Have you ever looked at a redfish? Yeah. In the water? Yeah. Their tails are brown, but yep. whenever they're out, it's like a cobalt blue, and it's the prettiest sight you ever seen. You're out there looking for tail and redfish, and all of a sudden you see it just that see little, that little blue, shade of blue, that little shade of blue up there. It's like oh my goodness gracious. Listen, you guys are dropping some good stuff now. I like that. Fishing the south end of the lake next month. What should I focus on? Either one of you guys. I'm docks. Docks. Yeah, he's docks. Yeah. Next month, I'm I'm docks, man. I'm not. I'm well. I, I mean, I'll go out on some on some shallow reef holes that's got some rock and some sand and stuff like that because they're going to be up there. They're going to be up there spawning. Okay. What about you? Staging areas. Staging areas. Is large mouth fish. Large mouth fishing. Both. <laughs> Well, well both, yeah, both. 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 <laughs> but you're, you're keying on Sally. You will not, that. you will not throw a big Becky back though. That's what, if she bites. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's listen. That's Kaz. He said take big Becky for a ride. Becky, you're taking Becky for a Would ride. It still be shallow if the fishery didn't have docks like like uh, like like Russell. <laughs> I would be shallow points and shallow repos. I sure yeah. would. You gonna stay shallow though? I'm staying shallow. That's interesting. Michael Temples, I didn't know that was you that asked that question. So that's that's a great question. And I hope I hope you put into practice what Kevin said. So that might be it. Ask Kevin if Mr. Krabs is still chilling in his box. My emotional support pet is still in the box. <laughs> Please tell everybody what your emotional support pet is. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you better explain better that one. Somebody's gonna come okay, up with okay. Yeah. So uh, you know, we catch a lot of fish, they spit up a lot of stuff. And uh, I got a crawfish living in one of my live wells that the bass spit up. I'm just going to leave him in there. However long he's in there, he's in there. So I had a client the other day. He was like, well, what if they ask you in one of these tournaments? So you bought the live bait. What are you doing with that? And I told the guy, I said, man, you know, we caught all these fish on a certain bait that day. Yeah. Um, I ain't going to say what it was. I understand. Do the trip if you want to know. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Lipstickerfishing.com. Yeah. There you go. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, so, that you know, I told them about this crawfish in there, and they looked in there, and sure enough, there he is crawling around, and they were like, you know, you know, what what if they, somebody was to say something about live bait? And I was like, y'all know we ain't been using no live right, bait. Right, right. I said, they said, well, what if the tournament, you know, and I, I cracked some jokes about, Oh, yes. Hey, that's my emotional support. That's it. Right that's I'll get him a tag, a collar, whatever. We'll put it on. <laughs> Does he have whatever. a name? Does he have a name? Call him a daggone crawfish. <laughs> According crawfish. to Derek O, he's, he's Mr. Crabs Mr. now. He's Crabs. Mr. Crabs. Yeah, Crabs. we were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, he's so, Mr. Crabs. Uh, interesting. Mr. Jeremiah Guy says Lanier and Alatuna are both full of perch and they're huge. Stephen Barday, what's up, buddy? <laughs> that is the centerfold guy. Oh, yeah. He's going to be a centerfold. He's mm. the one who said he needed two thongs. Mm. He's, I, th I think he's really just, you know, that's what he said. Um, he caught a pound and a half perch on a Ned rig earlier this year. So, yeah, yeah they're there. They're there. Farmer, yes, those crawfish do look like a true grit color that we all know uh, and that you like very much. Let's uh, see. Grew up fishing in Georgia. We commonly call it yellow perch on small crayfish while brim fishing. I call them poontang. I call what? I call them poontang. <laughs> poontang? Poontang. The crawfish or the perch? Perch. That's what we used to always call them. Poontang. Is there a story behind that I need to know about? Me and some friends just used to catch them, and they used to call them poontangs. Poontangs. That's it. I don't know why I wear it. Tim, we got that on. We got that right. We're going to record that poontang. Yeah, that, that's our word for the week. There's a new short right There's there. There's a new short right there. Poo yeah, you're going to make you TikTok famous okay. with that one. Okay. So there you go. It's either blinker fish, bent worm. Now we got poontang this week. <laughs> poontang or poontang? Yeah, poontang. 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 You know what I call poontang? I've heard of poontang. He left the N out of that, right? <laughs> the of that. There's no N. It's not poontang. Oh, the, oh, it's not poontang. The N is solid oh, in there. Oh, it's yeah, the N's solid. Every day okay, day. I get it now. I thought this whole time you were saying the other thing, too. I was like, he said poontang. I'm with Kevin. Oh, I, I thought there was like an extra O and an N poontang. in there. That was poo poo poontang. Poontang. Uh, poontang. <laughs> yeah, if Kevin Stowers is listening to this thing, he'll, 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 he'll chime in there. Poontang, yeah, not poontang. Unless Poo. I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> is that is that one O or two? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we spell that. So, um, pull up Mark Garrett's comment right there, right at the bottom. 
Best advice I heard. And I think that's going back to your co-angler thing. Yeah. Makes a hundred percent. Let's see. I just dipped the shaky head tail in chartreuse. Yeah. I listen to that. And then we do that. We do that. Uh, sometimes I'll do my, the flappers or what are you going to call them on my double tail grub? I'll do that a little bit. There you go. A sandwich. <laughs> what was that? Kevin <laughs> calls them a sandwich. Yes, sir. Uh, they are. They're, they're my good. Right, they ain't good. Ain't nothing better than fried fried up perch. <laughs> uh, didn't a record yellow perch just get caught out of Burton recently? Yes. I don't know, but uh, you know, yes. How big was it? Two nine. Two nine. Two nine. Really? Yeah. It was. Uh, who, what was his name? He works oh. at Hammonds. Or used to work at Hammonds. Was it? Uh, two nine perch is serious. That's a serious was fish. It ben, was it Benson? That no. Out? It was uh, uh, Buddy you Emerson. Know Emerson? Yes, Emerson. Emerson yes, caught that's it. right. That's Emerson right. caught a 2-9 two perch. 2-9 two perch, 16 inches yeah. off of a jerk bait in five foot of water, he said. Good night. There you go. So <laughs> I used to catch perch only there back in the 70s. Uh, right above that, go right above pink. Is a red crawl chatterbait an option on Lanier? I'd say more in the stained water, wouldn't you? If you're going to throw it. Throw it on a clay. Do nothing clay banks. It's clay banks. Place. Something with that color. I don't throw a chatterbait a whole lot. Um, that's probably something I should throw a lot more of, but I just. Yeah. I, I'm not know, a fan. If I'm throwing something like that, I'm either cranking or, you know. Um, I know you can get the chatterbait a little deeper. and It puts a lot of vibration out, you know, it, but it's not something that I do a lot of. Gotcha. Okay. Most of the time, if I want to go deeper, I'll throw like a jig or something. Understand. Change the trailer. Change the trailer. A lot of kicking action yes. on the trailer. Surf dead. Y'all dirty tonight. Not, it's not me. It's the guests. So I, say nothing I took a shower. Tonight. You took right. a shower. Yeah. I, took a shower. I didn't Eight, three three shower. How long of a soft bait shad are you fishing this time of year? So, like, I'm, I think he's like Kai Tech or something like that. Is there a certain size? I'm too um, Huh? Two eight. Two eight. Yeah, two eight. Two eight is what threes. I caught mine on Saturday. I was throwing two eight. Yeah, two eights, three threes. Okay. You don't you definitely don't want to go big this time of year if you're doing that. Like if you're Demekian and all that stuff, you don't want to put big bait down there, do you? Some dock fish, man. Dock fish, yeah. But if yeah, okay. There you go. So dock fishing out there. So um yeah, I'm not even gonna read some of them comments. See, it's it, again, it's not me, it's the guys I hang around with. So um I know we were talking swim baits about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> this is the way this show works. We yeah. just go where it leads us. Rabbit holes. So I, I got, I got something. You got something? Yeah, I was going on that. Oh, one. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, guys. So listen. Give me the drums. You're not giving me the drums. He's down there. We're not going crappy fishing, Jeremiah. Ah, oh, yeah, I'll take him. I'm just kidding. So Kevin has got an announcement. You're gonna hear it first. Here, nobody else yeah, knows. Yeah. Nobody, Nobody not, else uh, knows. Just a very limited. Very variety. limited people. So I'm just going to go ahead and just tell you it is a very good opportunity to learn and have some fun. So, oh. Kevin, go ahead. You tell them what you're getting ready to start doing. So I'm going to, to – um, it, it has to be open tournaments. It can't be the club tournament that weekend warrior kind of thing. It has to be an open tournament like Scott's thing that he puts on scott puts on a phenomenal tournament has a lot of guys that are just got the hammers, hammers. baby hammers and i've already done one of these with mr west wilson west wilson i hope west he doesn't wilson. scare me saying that um but yeah when we finished third it was a phenomenal learning experience for him but i'm gonna start offering that as a trip to fish a open tournament for my more advanced clients now if you're not ready for that i'm and i don't feel like you're ready for that i'm gonna tell you look we're gonna chase them from one end of the lake to the other end of the lake you know it's really for guys that are more advanced um you know tournament guys that yeah. that's kind of been in the game for a little while that just you know wants to get that experience maybe get a little bit better maybe learn some stuff um, you know, throughout a tournament day and throughout a tournament day, it's not a casual stroll. Like I do a guide trip. It's yeah. not, you know, we're not just going to sit around and hang out and do the round with these fish. Not saying that we don't try to, you know, go and do our best during a guide trip, but during a tournament, it's a whole different level of 
the pursuit of chasing fish and it's in a tournament yes, environment exactly so like i mean the second yes. you get on the boat yes, yes you're paying for that yes but your ass better be ready to fish yes and so that's right. why that's why you say the more more advanced guys yeah so, not just somebody that just says hey i think i want a bass fish and it's the first time you ever really got your feet wet in it. do a guide trip do some guide trips first then work your way up to that yeah but guys that want to come out and fish more advanced tournaments yeah i like it yeah i'm gonna start offering that to my clients i like it so yeah. and so i think so i think that's a, another thing two guys gotta take into account on that is when you do a regular guide trip mm -hmm. you ask the client what you know what do they want to figure out today what do they want to do and so you kind of cater to the day and you're teaching them at a slower pace but if you're going to do it on a open tournament it's yes. like okay boys here we go and so it, they've it has, got to it has to be something that anybody can go fish. It can't be, you know, like a club tournament or anything like that. It has to be something that's open. Yeah. For everybody to yeah, fish. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just you don't have to pull them up, but a couple questions. Uh, is, is that at normal guide cost or just the entry fee? No, you're paying for the guide trip. I'm paying for the guide trip, pay, pay the entry fee. If we win anything, we'll split it. Yeah, so yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. So we're going to, you know, that's a fair way to do it. Yeah. Pay me for the trip. Pay for the entry fee. You, you know, you can't guarantee that you're going to win anything, but if you do, we'll split it down the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I think that's, I think that's a, yeah, that's, that would be fun because again, that's a totally different environment. It is. It's, and it's, and it's something that I think, uh, you know, a lot of guys, they fish tournaments and they're just, they want to learn how to get better. How do you how do you learn how to get better under that pressure? How do you yeah. get better under yeah, that no, pressure? Yeah, no, absolutely. How do you how do you, you know, how did how is the pursuit? I mean, it's like, you know, um, and, and like I said, that you know, I can't guarantee anything. Yeah. You, I mean, you can't even guarantee, hey, we're gonna catch a fish today. You can't guarantee that. But they will see um, you in an environment that's different. Yes. yes. You got your you got your right. competitive hat on. Right. And so, right. and that will take somebody that's getting new to it. Right to tournament fishing, like this is what goes on. Uh, right. had a question there any lake, any open, or is this more of a Lanier thing? So, if I, I had, a, I would say let's let's keep it on Lanier, right? For now, um, you know, I might, I might, you know, branch out to some other stuff later on, but yeah, just starting this, I'm going to just do Lanier, and uh, you know, they they have quite a few open tournaments that you can get. Yeah, into. Scott's got one, seem like every two weeks, three weeks, so there's yes. plenty of opportunities, yes. That's awesome. We get the boat back right and it's fixed. Me and my brother here is actually going to fish Scott's uh, Saturday. So hopefully we'll have yeah. a boat to do that on. <laughs> yeah. So, Kevin, that's yeah. awesome. I fish a ton of tournaments and I've been saying that having a coach would be phenomenal. Yeah. And I, and I mean, you know, that's kind of like, that's kind of like what this is, is going to be, you know. But I mean, I'm, hey, I'm not letting up on nothing, you know. Yeah. So you're fishing hey, it. I, hey, we're in pursuit of, you know, and that's why I said my more advanced people. Yeah. Not just the guy that's just starting getting his feet wet in bass. Fishing. You got to be with those. We're talking stuff. about somebody that's seasoned a little bit, you know, like like uh, Wes was. Wes, you know, I threw it out there to Wes. I said, hey, man, I said, you want to fish this this weekend? And he asked me, he says, are you serious? Yeah. I'm serious. And he's like, well, uh, He's like, okay. He said, you, you're probably the only one that would do that. And I'm like, yeah. Well, I I'm, think you are. Hell, you're, only one, you're, you're one of the <laughs> let's few. Let's do it. <laughs> you're one of the few. That so, um, yeah. I mean, we had a tournament. We had a we had a good day that day, and then you know we caught them pretty good. I mean, we didn't win it. I mean, you we took got third. Yeah, we got into money. We yeah, we no, money. it was a great day. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a pretty cool day. That and, is uh, that's different and a great learning experience too. Yeah, for, for you know. For Wes and it, it was it was cool. You know, maybe he, you know, I know I know he fishes tournaments and he does really well. He's a phenomenal. He's fisher. a good angler. He he's is a good, he's angler. a good angler. He's somebody that is seasoned. There you go. There's Wes right we there. We done. That sounds like something um, Wes would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he's he's a phenomenal angler. You know, and you know he just wanted to get out there and you know when I threw that out there to him, he jumped all over it. Um. You know this. You know, this whole God in world, uh, 
you know, hey, it's a way for people to learn stuff. And I, and I mean, I got some of the old guys that come out and they're like, hey, you know, and I'm not going to name any of them. Yeah. But some of the old dogs, they're like, hey, man, get me in this Ford Sonar game. Yeah. I'm tired of these guys beating me with it. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think over the time, these guys will get out there and kind of practice some of the stuff that we went over and we've done. I think some of these old guys will kind of pick up on it and start doing it, and they'll be more successful with it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, that's why Paul Driscoll says he likes to fish with young guys. Yeah. He likes to fish with young right. guys and all that. A uh, couple of questions. Now, first, guys, I won't do it immediately. Tomorrow when I get in, I will uh, go down into the description of this uh, program, and I will type in both of them, all the contact information, you know, for the websites and all that. So if you haven't already heard it tonight, you'll, you'll have that. Uh, Alex Gossett, I'm going to skip your question, but I'm going to come back to it because since we're dealing with this guy thing, Jordan Cooper wants to know how you're going to vet your clients. So how would – okay, so like this. Guy calls up, hey, Kevin, I want to fish an open tournament with you. What are you going to ask me? Well, I'm going to ask you if you fish tournaments, what you fished, you know, what kind of stuff you've done and for how long. Mm. How long you been in the bass fishing? Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you'll start off with that, and then you can yeah. kind of tell by their answers. Yeah. This might not be for you. Yes. And I, and I, you know, like I said, I don't, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings with it. But, you know, I <laughs> Brad would, Davis says, "Thanks for not calling me out, Kevin." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brad Davis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now he's been called out. He's now. been called out. Uh, he called himself out. Yeah, you did that to yourself. Yeah, is it a team event? Yeah, I mean it would be because you would yes. you would have Kevin and you whoever's paying for it to yes. be to be a team. Uh, guys, if you're asking right there, do I qualify? Listen, call Kevin. Maybe do you know Joshua? Who is Josh? Joshua? Is Goat or Goody? Or it might just be good. I don't know. Yeah, I've, I have fished with him before. Yeah, he would. He would. There you go. Yeah. So um, if it's somebody I know and I've been out on the lake with, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, know. Like I've got, like I've got, you know, guys that, you know, I know. Yeah, like Rick over there. I qualify. You do qualify. qualify. I believe. I, I believe <laughs> we might put it. We might put it to a yeah. vote with you. I mean, since your nickname now is the yeah, Squirrel. We, we, We'll get you a cane. We'll get him a cane. <laughs> we'll make sure we got the right seating Dang. for you. So wow. uh, what did it take to win the Chester T Club? It took 17. Um, I, I came in ninth in that tournament with my cousin. We had 13-something. But 17, and I forget the gentleman who won it, but 17. And it, like, that was like a different day. It was great in the morning, and that wind picked up about 30 miles an hour. But now let me ask you this because, I mean, and I want you to be honest. Yes. What do you think of that idea? Well, I think it's great. Yeah, it's a different it's opportunity a, that most guides do not offer. No. So I, I think it's pretty cool. We spent a whole week trying to figure out what Kevin was going to announce like that. Yeah. And that was not what I was thinking. So that's good, though. That's different yeah. because a lot of guides, now you got some of your young ones like a meal and all them. They'll jump in tournaments. You oh, know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those guys are phenomenal. But you got a lot of guys on Lanier that will not jump. A lot of guides, not guys. Mm -hmm. A lot of guides on Lanier that will not jump in a tournament because they're afraid if they have a bad day to affect their business. But you, I mean, you've had good days and you've had what you would call subpar well, I days. Mean, you take, take like this past weekend from, from me and Rick, for example, you know, we did, we didn't, I mean, we caught plenty of fish during our tournament, but I mean, we didn't win anything. We didn't get into the money. Yeah. But like the last three tournaments before that, I mean, I've had no, pretty you, good finishes. You've had, had a good a, run. Had a third in the Scots, one of Scots tournaments. Had a third in the BFL, and then had a seventh in the uh, the ABA thing, yeah. the pro thing with the ABA thing. Um, and then you know me and Rick. I mean we, I you know like a, like a, I I kind of wrote a post about it talking about fishing history, and I kind of did fish history that day. Yeah. And uh, it, it bit us in the rear end. I mean, like I said, we caught fish, but it wasn't the big bites that we needed to get. Right. Well, that's you know, fishing in general. Um, you can't yeah. you can't guarantee it every day. Yeah. So that um, but I, th I personally, guys, I think that's a really cool opportunity. Um, again, the reason why I think it's cool, go book a trip with Kevin just to learn. But for those guys that want to see what – because Scott Barnes tournament, even though it's, you know – it doesn't have a title in front of it like the ABA or the BFL, but that tournament is loaded. We're talking about Scott Barnes, the mayor, runs them out of Little Hall. 
that tournament is loaded with generally week in, week out, or wherever he does the best of the best on Lake Lanier. Yep. And that's so who we're going to be fishing. That's against. who you're going to fish against. And so when that's you jump into that, against. it's not time to say, this is how you tie. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's for guys exactly. like, let's go try to kick some ass and try to win it. Yep. Because you ain't doing it to just, you're trying to win it. You're, those guys are the best of the best on Lanier. You know? Yeah. And and that's, that's kind of who we're going to be fishing against. Yeah. I like it. When it's you know when it's an open tournament, anybody can come sign up. I mean, pros can come sign up. Whoever can come sign up. Yeah, it's up. like Jordan Lee was there, and it is. I mean, yeah. it, at those guys that fish that at any given time, any one of those guys are going to catch them. They're going. Somebody's oh, yeah. going to yeah. always get on them good. Absolutely, absolutely. I like that idea. Yeah. Good for you, dude. I like that idea. Uh, Michael Temples, I'm going to let you answer this, Rick. Start off with. Because you're going to be fishing in the BFL coming up, right? Didn't you say you're going to be fishing we'll there? It, yeah. Any predictions? I think you're going to have to have 20 plus. There's probably going to be five to six bags in the 20 plus range. Yeah. And on the co angler side, there's probably going to be one bag, two bags in the high 16, 17 pound range. Yeah. And then it's going to be average average from that yeah. and that's the thing with all these tournaments there's always that group of guys that's on oh yeah always Absolutely. that group of guys that's on are you fishing that one yes sir who are you fishing it with you know? Know. oh that one so <laughs> so so oh that's right <laughs> i don't know who dude i was gonna go? say could you do could you do could you do a group uh, but bfl is not one that you could do no. a guide trip no. like that so they because they no. pair you up so it's just no. the opens like scott no said. it would have to okay. be an open tournament open to anybody yeah you know something that you know, your your buddies in the club are not going to complain about. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. makes sense. And Scott yeah. says, come one, come on. There you go. He does. Great idea. It's also a chance to win some of the guide trip money back. Absolutely possible. You could right? do that. If you could do that. Wes, uh, Wes only gave me, like, you know, he didn't give me the full guide money. For right, that. yeah. He, so, he actually got a good deal on a trip <laughs> yeah that's it you, so, so he you, got a good deal on a trip deal. so yeah so if you go and, and do well but i mean there it. again there that's again you cannot guarantee i cannot guarantee it right but i can give you that experience to yes. go fish something because like that. you know you what? can see how Th i do it think about that though a lot of guys and i hear this and i i think it's a terrible excuse terrible reason and you, you can chime in on this too rick a lot of guys will not go fish in a scott barn style tournament because of the people who fish it too much competition and, and people make excuses but they're like i don't want to donate my money because i'm going to get beat and i think you well, only you already get, go in with the wrong mindset 100 percent. and if you mm -hmm. want to be the best you got to play with the best with like them. that yeah that's right so that, that's iron good. sharpens iron <laughs> but, but listen i hear that though yeah barnes i don't want to go fish in that tournament because there's only five guys that are going to win that week in and week out. And I'm like, okay, but if you stick in it like Emil did, because yep. Emil used to get his ass kicked in that thing, and you got to, and he said that you got to put in your butt whippings. Yep. And eventually, you're that guy that everybody's complaining about. Yep. That's he's right. he's somebody yeah, I have he, a he didn't start off just absolutely. winning. He's somebody I have a lot of respect for. I, I like mean, the hell that I guy care. catches them everywhere he goes. Prince catches them everywhere he goes. Yeah. Marks. Paul catches them everywhere Paul he goes. Paul is impressive. These guys are phenomenal fishermen, but there ain't a there ain't a day that goes by that I won't bike my boat in the water and fish against them. See, that's the way you should be. And I go in there with all the confidence in the world. Yeah, I know that's. that's and if you can't do that, then you don't need to be fishing it anyway. Yeah, figure figure out what's going on there because there's probably some more stuff you need to work on. Some more <laughs> stuff you need to learn. I like that. I like yes. that. Kevin, are you fishing out of your boat for those trips or the customer's boat? My boat. Yeah, yeah, you're running that trolling motor, baby. We're fishing out of my boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's like a no-brainer. Yeah, I, I get that. It's a good question, but I totally 100% understand why. Absolutely. Yes, We're fishing out of my boat. All right. That, perfect. All right, so, Rick, because yeah. I want to make sure we still give you some love on these swim baits. Because First of all, they're awesome looking. And I know you got a lot of time invested in figuring these things out and the yep. way you test them and all that. <clears throat> what is the future for Southern Hook Lures? What, what are you are you kind of got some behind the scene things that you might be working out? Or are you just still perfecting the craft? Or no, I've got I've got swim baits made all the way up till twenty thirty, but nobody's seen. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, I've got I've I've got a client that's in California that wants me to make a 15 inch rainbow trout, and I've got it made. I just haven't got it sent to him yet. 
So that's awesome. Inch. 15 inch. Yeah. That's probably for them big spots out there on them lakes out in California that eat them salmon or, and rainbows yeah. and all that. One thing, one thing, you know, everybody knows that that's my favorite <laughs> joint bait right there. And I'm, I'm just going to put him a little plug in right here. This bait right here very soon is going to be the deal. Yeah. It's coming. And which bait, coming. You, which bait are you referring to? The bite-sized herring. The bite-sized herring. Yep. You know, I'm looking at this, and, and here's the thing that I'm noticing with this. Um, first of all, I see some initials in it. SHL. So you put – Southern you, Hook So Hook. that way they know it's an original. That's correct. Um, and – I've held a lot of Sibyls in my hand, you know, like that. I, I just – I feel – it just feels different to me in my hand. It doesn't feel like what you say, something mass-produced in China. Right. Yeah. And uh, there's, you know, how many colors do these come in? They they come in five colors on my website, but you can order any custom color. I can paint any color you want. So yeah. if I want this, like what I call um, little five-points pink, I could paint any color. You that too, That's because Jeremiah's got this rat. He it's fishes one of them rat. Pink. It's like hot pink and all that. Uh, and so I call that my my word for that is little five points. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You, yeah. you get what I'm saying. But I just think it's pretty cool that that first of all, there's talent that goes into this. There's a like craftsmanship and some art that goes into that. Right. And so I would imagine that every bait since they're all custom made kind of by you, every bait's just a little bit different. They're all kind of unique in their own way. I mean, they all might run through the same, but you're not mass producing them like out of a factory in no. China. So there's no. always just that little, every like, one it's of a them true custom. Every one of them is picked up by me and I have to grind those insets in every single one of them. Not the side, but I'm talking where the hinges are. Yeah. Every one of them are grinded out by me. I think that's amazing. Yeah. I think, and I'm actually gonna. I, I was wanting to put the feelers disco out. Disco rat, yeah. Okay. I was right. wanting to put the 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 feelers out to see if people would want to learn this trait, to show them how to mass, you know, how to master a swim bait, how to master either even a crankbait. I'm doing crankbaits now for the guy who bought Sutton. Uh, I made him 400 crankbaits a couple of a couple two or three weeks ago. Uh, because he got into the bait business, not really knowing how to make the bait. Right. And so I made them for him. So is, is this an apprentice kind of ship or is this somebody would pay? If somebody, yeah, if somebody wants to learn how to carve something out of wood and then, you know, put it in the a, whole process to put it in a clay yeah. mold. Show just, me that. Yeah, I, want, yeah. I want to show people that this is. Yeah. So this is what bait is that? That's the uh, VR2. VR2. V, VR3. I'm sorry. VR3. VR3. So right now I'm holding a piece of clay. Yeah. That you can sit well, the lights there. So he's got it, the mold right there. Yep. And so you will take this. And that will be the first part of the first part of the silicone mold. You yeah, have two yeah. pieces. So yeah, so this is where it starts. And from this is how you get the the, the first side impression. Side impression. Right. And then from this, you have how to you make get, the whole box again, take that clay off, and then you do the other side. Uh oh, got it. Yes, yeah, so you got both sides. Part mold. Unless you're doing a birthing mold. A birthing mold is a one-piece mold where you slid it down the middle and you slide it out. Yeah. It's like having kids. They call it a birthing mold. Makes sense. And so then once you get this silicone right here. Correct. That's your master. That's the master. That is the master. You never, ever mess with the master. The master is. That's what is my wife says. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hell, you met her. Oh, you know man. what I mean? You met her. <laughs> But, nice. you, but, in trouble when you, I but you never mess with the master. That, that with that master Ooh. right there, I can do. I can make a, a glide bait out of it. I can make a three a three segmented swim bait out of it, or, or whatever. Pull I want that to. up. Is that your wife? Huh? Is that your wife right there, Kimberly Thomas Ash Steckelberg? That's her. Yeah. Boy, you out punted your coverage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He did. <laughs> Hey, yeah. well, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'm, uh, Good I'm very, job, dude. I'm very blessed. Man. You are, dude. Like, I like you more and more every day. <laughs> no, but that's pretty cool, the whole process. And so, so Derek O right there absolutely would. So you got guys that would take that opportunity because, yeah. again, this is like – and I'm just going to be honest. I can tie jigs. I can pour and tie jigs. But my mold's already made. Right. Skirt material's already made. Color's already there for you. Right, right. 
everything. But to take, but if you take need somebody, idea, if you need somebody to take that off of your plate to where you can do other things yeah. like fish North Georgia, I can make these molds and have these spit out to you cheaper than you can make them. Been looking for that. <laughs> Been looking for that. So yeah, absolutely. But I, I think it's I think it's really neat that you can kind of see the process. What comes in your brain right. goes into a carving. And yeah, show me that. So I show by the process. That's what it starts out with. That's a drawing that I drew on a piece of uh, tracing paper. Pull that up right there. Pull me up. I'm, have, the, good, I'm the good looking one in this. I don't I don't know how these guys get all these good looking women here. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so this is your idea yep that's your idea you take this and then you draw it on a piece of wood just like this right here like you can get a hobby lobby a little piece of balsa right well i I, pre I prefer bass wood or gelatin because it's, it's, it's a little harder. bit harder okay it's, balsa to me is just a little bit too fuzzy okay you makes sense you can't get a real good show on so it. then what you've done here you kind of kind of drew it out, out. That's you guys probably can't see that you might can so you draw it out and then you kind of Hand carve it from here. I'll, I'll carve it out 100%. But then that drawing right there that I just showed you yeah. on that tracing paper, you draw it on one side, which is that same picture right there, which is the which is the tracing. Okay. So, yeah. So, here's the tracing. So, this is after you, what the pizza would become. Uh-huh. Right there. Yep. All right. And then whenever you're, when you've got it cut out, that tracing that you just drew, you flip that over and you mend it and it'll actually leave an impression on the other side to where you can carve out the carving on the face. Just so just exactly like it's on there. You've got to get the center line. You've got to get your edges, right? You've got to get down the backs, right? You got to get down the front, right? Everything's got to be equal. Everything's got to be killed. Perfect. If it doesn't, it runs wopsided and wanky and all kinds of stuff. Wanky, you know, yeah, all over yeah. wanky. wanky. There's another word for that. So this ain't something right here that, Oh, Andy Griffith and his pocket knife is going to sit there. and Absolutely. And, oh, really? Yeah. You Your pocket me. knife? Yeah. yeah. The park, pocket knife is the whole part of the gill plates and everything else. I've got a set Ooh. of knives. Well, I'll take that back. I've got a set of knives, and that guy right there is my tool. Of my husky. Yeah. So that's, that's old razor blade. That's right. And so you go from this right here to the clay. To a, yep, to to a, a clay. To a skill saw. Get it all. You Get it all nice. It. Once it's sealed and smooth, then you put it in the clay. Then once you put it in the clay, you make the you make the master impression, which is what you've got right there. Right. And then once you have the master impression, then you can take it to the next stage. That's one that just came out of a master with no no scales, no nothing. Okay. And, and then, then, you, then you take that, and then you can do what you want to with it. If you look inside that clay mold, you can see where I have the weight harness. You see the wire that's in the front and the back? Yes. Okay, that's the weight harness to where that weight's going to make 100% sure that it's 100% right down the middle. Gotcha. That way it's even and straight. That's what holds it in there. And then you can pull that harness out once it's molded. You just pull it out, and then you take a little bit of the epoxy, and you epoxy both the holes open, and you're good to go. Once you get the – real quick, because I know we're, get, we're running out of time. I don't want to keep you guys too long because I know you got a, a long drive. Once you get from the silicone uh – -huh. What's the next step? Uh, that's it? That's pretty much it, but then you've got to figure out your flotation rate and okay. what weight you want. The flotation rate is, that's whenever time and money comes into play. Gotcha. Because, you know, like, let's say the fickle, for instance, or like a swim bait. I mean, you, you have the flotation off any bit, and it's going to sink like a rock, and it will not swim. You know, if you have the weight off any, it's going to float and it won't, it'll start to rise up to the top and it won't go back down. You know, when you're reeling, you're wanting to burn it like a stupid Sabille. Yeah, <laughs> stupid <laughs> Sabille. <laughs> and you're wanting, to run, it, stupid and you're wanting to run it just under the surface. <laughs> well, if it doesn't have the right weight in the flotation amount there, it's going to come right up there on the surface and flop sideways. It won't, it don't matter if you hold your rod in the water <coughs> or whatever, it's still going to come right up to the third. So, so, so there's some science into it as well. Oh, absolutely. So. I've got a book this thick. I've got a book that thick that I've got a different. I'll, I'll, uh, this will be test A, test B, test C. Test, and it's different flotations of 22 milliliters of this, 22 milliliters of that, 5 milliliters of flotation, 10 milliliters of flotation, 3 sixteenths weight, quarter ounce weight, just on and on and on until you get that perfect one. Because there's a, there's a, there's a, 
there's a balance if you want it to swim fast right if you want it to swim slow if you want it to swim flat fast fast 90 percent of the time you're not going to get that one to swim slow because there's so much weight there to pull it down that it's it's just taking it away from it so there's that fine line that you can have fast and slow you just can't have both of them at the same time gotcha something's got to give on a resin bait oh, right, on, yeah. on a mass produced you know bait that's you know plastic infused then you, you can you can find that you can find that i tell you what we almost could do like an entire live well just on bait making right there. i think so because like i'm show. sitting there like i gotta go home and go to bed and like i'm gonna be up at two o'clock in the morning thinking how did he I'm do talking that painting and the whole shoot yeah so i mean yeah. that's it um that th this is awesome yeah this is awesome just seeing you like your idea through the different stages and even there you, then you got the paint that you right. wouldn't even cover and all that so uh what, what kind i've of got a different technique on how i paint now too so i got you i want to okay before we go i want to i want alex has throwed that question up several times you know anything about alatuna i don't know nothing about yeah, it. Alatuna, been on the lake. i will say I, this just from what i'm hearing it's shallow right now i mean not the lake but people are targeting fish shallow with your crankbaits, with your jigs, shaky heads, that kind of thing. So I'll, I'll say this. Anywhere you go, figure out what your fish are doing, what time of the year yep. it is, where should they be. If I was on Ralph Tuna right now, I would be looking, what is a spawning pocket? What are they going to use to spawn on? And I would go around that and try to find them in staging areas. Or if they're starting to show up, or if they ain't, i go back deep. I mean, yeah. you know. Let that would fish. be my starting point. Yeah, I don't really fish out tuna, but that would be my starting point now. If you went, yeah, if you were going on that lake yes. tomorrow, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna go out there and just be, oh, that bank looks good over. I'm gonna go throw a worm over there and not having no reason to do it, right? If I'm gonna go do something now, anywhere, it's gonna be, hey, these fish are about to spawn. I got you, or they're thinking about it, they're they're getting in the position for it, you know. So Kyle Rogers has thrown out a couple of really good, he said, You're a damn bait building genius. <laughs> That's high praise. That's high praise. I appreciate it. All right, that. last question of the night. Robert Bretz, pull that up. Last question tonight. Could you laser cut it on a CNC, then sand on a lathe? I make plastisol soft and airbrush plastic lures, but haven't done wood yet. I mean, you you can, but you don't have to. I mean, you can put you can make that if you want to do it on a CNC. Yeah. But I mean, you really don't have to. I mean, you could cut out the angles and stuff. Um it's the same way some of the guys do the balsa crankbaits. They have a jig that they run on a, uh, what do you call that thing that's got the blade here that runs on what is it? It's not a scroll. What is that thing? It's some tool. Huh? Yeah, some tool. tool. Yeah. Some tool. Uh, but I got you. Stephen Barday, which is past his bedtime, he's still up. He said, you need to hush because what you said has too much common sense. <laughs> I mean, but. It, what them fish doing, man? Yeah, so like that. So, all right, guys. All right, so we went a little over tonight. So, uh. Yeah, first no. of all, first of all, farmer, don't think I didn't see that five foot five comment. You're gonna come <laughs> back in the shop here, big boy. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that one. So love you guys. Seriously, Rick, thank you for coming and showing off some baits, dropping some juice about how to do it, and showing us the process. I think that's pretty darn neat. Of all the things that got said, just what actually goes into making not a bait, but a high quality good bait. Correct. Because your reputation preceded you tonight. I I, I heard a lot about you know. <laughs> People, I, I, I talk to people about if I've never met the guest before, and tonight's first night we met, right. I always I, I check you out. I do a little background check, you know, like that. But <laughs> everybody to a man spoke very highly of you as a person and your baits. Well, so, I appreciate that. again, that's, and, that's and his wife, again, though, you know, you got plenty of coverage there, buddy. But we're going to say that. But, again, <laughs> thanks for watching. But she also put in the comments. Uh, the website, Southern, yeah, she's Southern she's, Hook. She's the business. That's mind. what I was getting. At. You I mean, see the brains behind it. Yeah, you're the art and the talent, right? But she's the brains. Yeah, I have an idea, and she trumps it ninety percent of the time. Well, and, and that that <laughs> you know what I have heard. That's that's the key to a successful marriage mm -hmm. is learning how to look at your wife and say, "Yeah, you're right." All the link, <laughs> all the links will be put in post production. That's so exactly right. So I was going to say post production. So. Go to the uh, description, and all the links will be in there probably by tomorrow. Is that by tomorrow, yeah, because my butt's going home and going to bed because I've been up up here since seven. Okay, now Kevin. Yum yum. Yep. Say what? What'd you, you say? Said, you said you was going home, so I'm just saying yum yum. You saw my wife before that. You know that ain't <laughs> happening tonight. 
Oh, uh, I don't, I don't. Hey, he's welcome back anytime. Hey, it's a good thing she only watches two minutes. So. She only what? Well, that's two, <laughs> what did I say? Best two minutes of her life. That she's used to. That's all she needs is two minutes. So, Kevin, though, again, you, you and I are buddies, and it, you're welcome. Every, and, and I consider us friends now, too. I, I mean, I appreciate you coming up. So, absolutely. Kevin, I have a great time on the water when I do, when I went up with you. And, but, yeah. I love picking your brain and stuff and the way we communicate. I'm telling you right now, guys, listen, seriously, if you want to go, if you want to go on a guide trip to just $400 for the day, pick somebody else. If you want to go on a guide trip and learn something, whether it be sonar, how to target these megalodons or whatever, Kevin is the guy you need to go with. And I'm not saying that because he's a sponsor. I'm saying it because I've been on the boat with him. He taught me a lot of stuff about 2D sonar that blew my mind. It, even with just the frequency stuff, the way he, you know, can manipulate that thing. And guys, if you're good enough, the opportunity is out there now. If you if if you're willing and, and you're good enough, jump in one of these open tournaments with him and uh, go against the big boys on Lanier and see how you fare with that. So, but again, thank both of you and guys. Listen, hundredth episode of the Live Well had a great crowd tonight. Juicy show. That's what we're here for. We're just trying to make you guys feel more confident on the water. And, and go out there and have some success. And I think you heard enough tonight that you can take some of this stuff, put it into play. We talked about docks, you know. We talked about a lot of other things. That co-angler tip that Kevin gave me, actually, I think, or gave us, I actually think was the best tip I've heard for a co-angler since we've been doing this show. So it's what it's all about, you guys. So if you're on the water this weekend, first of all, be safe. Enjoy the opportunity fishing that you get. And we'll be back next Thursday with episode 101. Not sure who's going to be on yet, but we'll have you another good one. Enjoy your weekend, and we appreciate all of you. Good night.